Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch man, Calder Ness. Uh, this is episode 401. That's right, we made it here alive. We're going to be doing an entire set review on War of the Realms. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant dead pan humor. Oh, how many six how people work? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5. 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Hooks champion, Simeon. What's going on, Simeon? Not too much. Uh, you know, just finally, like, recuperated from episode 400. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, we go, I'm, we're, we're really easing back into the podcast because, like, we do episode 400, which was eight hours long. And now we're about to do a set review, which classically yeah. takes us about three to four hours to do. <laughs> Just about. So I guess yeah. we're cutting that time in half, but it's still like, man, running these little marathon, mini marathon every week. Hopefully after this, we get back to a normal schedule, which would be nice. But uh, what made you happy this week, my man? Uh, so a couple things made me happy this week. Obviously, uh, the live stream doing as well as it did. Um, being like a ton of fun, it got a little messy, obviously towards the end. Um, yeah, yeah. but, uh, no, we, we made more than a hundred or made more than $800, uh, dollars for charity. Uh, assuming everyone who sent in screenshots were legitimate. I assume that I don't know why yeah. I wouldn't, but, um, yeah. so yeah, that was really cool. And then, uh, like a day later I got this cat. That you might hear sprinting around the room throughout the yeah. recording with her little bell. Um, that was her just there, if you could Ooh. hear that. She's messing your, with my uh, boxes of the hero clips. Cat's, uh, what's your cat's name? So she's she's from Russia, so her name is Eladia. Whoa. I've Eladia. been speaking, I don't know if it's racist or not, but I've been speaking to her in like a f really bad Russian accent. I'm like, da, Eladia, come. Come, da, Eladia, pet. come. And I, Daddy is Adidas truck. I mean, Russia isn't vodka. a race, but uh, obviously it's not like, a race. Not a culture, though. Culturally insensitive, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. right. They're Russian. We America is pretty okay with being culturally insensitive gonna, to Russians. I'm gonna call her Larry have any, for short. Larry, Larry, a short fill. Alia. Is that is that Magic's name? Is that what? Is that why? See, oh, it's a cat. Ah, uh, see, it's all uh, she all and... she all black. She's got a, smoke uh, colored, so you got a, she ooh. she's black. But when you like pet her, there's like white gray fur underneath. So oh, okay. it's weird. Like when she moves, she's like this weird shimmer. Uh, but yeah, she's. Yeah. Uh, so the story behind why she's from Russia, or how she's from Russia, and how she came to be here why is. Uh, okay. I have a friend that's a. Uh, what do you call it? A cat Russian? salesperson. Oh, okay. Uh, a breeder, like uh, breeder. a cat breeder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the. Word. She's a cat breeder. Uh, okay. Bought this cat from Russia, brought it over to be part of like the breeding program. But she has uh, this like feline respiratory virus. She's a carrier for it, so she she doesn't oh. have symptoms, but she can transfer it. And okay. so obviously, if she has kittens, if she were to have kittens. Or just be around other cats, they would have the chance of getting it as well. So, sure. uh, nixed her whole life of crime that she was going to be in, and now she's living with me. Uh, yeah, so sort we of got to hang out now. Being like, yeah. well, you don't get to see any people of your race. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, you'll never see up. another cat ever again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I mean, well, whatever. But like, it's not like you take cats on cat play dates. Like, cats don't even no. really care about other cats that much. They just kind of like to hang out or whatever. Yeah. So. I'm yeah, saying, yeah. I think most cats like There's stuff I think off the shelf. It's so much harder to get a cat to like another cat than it is for like a dog to like oh, another yeah, dog. For sure. Uh, all right. Well, right on, man. That's really cool. We got Alalia 
official Alalia and Milo official podcast <laughs> mascot Dial pets. H pets. <laughs> Dial H pets. And Bessie. We can throw my cow on there too Heck if yeah, we want. We she, was, she was she in was in a thumbnail for Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> Thursday throwdown. Uh, all right. Uh, what made me happy this week, it was once again a couple of things. Um, the day after we did episode 400, I had to go work in Sioux Falls. I work for the uh, murder mystery dinner detective theater thing we do there. And it was really fun. Uh, I had a few people that I knew in the audience uh, watching it, and they were, like, really impressed with how blah, 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 all the acting and everything went. They enjoyed their food and all that stuff. So that was, like, a really good time. And then a little earlier this week, well, after that, but earlier this week, we, uh, I finally was able to go to a museum in town that was just always closed. I never had the time uh, to go check it out or whatever, and it was kind of neat. They had a lot of early Native American artifacts and stuff there that even I was unaware of. Um, they had some cool Lewis and Clark stuff. They had some uh, they had a weird exhibit that's like just in the month of February, and it's like just chairs. It's just like a bunch of different old chairs, which is like kind of <laughs> neat when you're like, yeah. oh, so this is what like an original office chair looks like. Okay, that's ghetto, you know, or like um, <laughs> the terrible. Looks painful uh, to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's just like a normal chair, but it has four wheels on it. Like think of taking a dining room chair. Like a, your basic, it's got four legs and everything, and then just put like wheels you could buy at Home Depot on the bottom of it. That's, that was like the, the original chair office chair. Oh, oh, all right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is more of like so. This is like plush. It's, it's little, not really an it's office a little, chair. Well, it's, it's fancier than like a kitchen table chair, yeah. though. Um, and then what was it? What else was there? Oh yeah, a terrible idea. That is the rocking high chair. So like a high chair for a baby, but it's also a oh. rocking chair. <laughs> Why would who would oh, why? Yes. Also reason, known as why? a trebuchet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, like checking out the museum was really cool. It was really fun. They had some art there too. I really, really enjoyed the art. I'll have to send you this picture, but they also had um some stuff that was about the city it was in. And it was about the old mental hospital, which wasn't like your stereotypical, like everybody here is crazy mental hospital. It was like a more this is a Midwest men mental hospital, so it's like it's all right. It's not like any total whack jobs, but this was just like classic horror. I sent this picture to you, Simeon. Um, classic, like what you would see in an old rundown hospital, like 20, 30 years after it has been closed, where it's like, ah, uh. you see, yeah, 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 it's like Disney characters, but there's like, it's pl not blood, but it's like paint or something on the walls. Yeah. So, also but then it's like, like rot and rotting yeah like water like, damage and, and stuff. just like gosh like did we try was someone taking pictures like first of all gotta take the picture in black and white second of all can we just slap some stuff on here that might look like someone was murdered here right. um that would be great it would really add like i think we should just cover snow white and the dwarves and yeah. like the bear from whatever it bear necessities like thumper is crying because there's like right some whatever that stuff is that's leaking down the wall is like blood running, running yeah. from his eyes or not blood or whatever it is and it's like this is terrifying so yeah it was just really fun hanging out checking out the museum and everything uh, so yeah, that's what made me happy this week. Acting, museums, and then tonight, uh, we're recording this on Friday, we get to finally play War of the Realms Sealed, so this is really oh, yeah. good that we're going to do a set review, so I'm ready to jump right into it, and I'm going to yeah. do all of this talking about everything for War of the Realms, <laughs> and then I'm going to get absolutely stomped and sealed, so I'm ready for it. <laughs> so yeah, I've played, at this point, I've played two, uh, two sealed two games of War of the Realms, and I will two. say... Yeah, two, or not games, know. two uh, two sealed, sealed events, I should events. say. Yeah, yeah. so uh, five games total. Um, I will say my first set of games, uh, I was built mostly out of, well, actually, no, only out of commons, and it was a real solid team. There's tons of synergy. You can pull, like, full packs of Avengers, and we'll see, like, as we go. I don't want to talk too much on it, but, like, we'll see as we go, like, some of the Avengers really pack a punch. Some of them are really good for their yeah. points. And then, um, yeah, like some of the like the super rare stuff uh, doesn't have like protected out wit or whatever. So like it's not instant game over unless you're playing against like that super rare Thanos or something. Maybe then it's yeah, instant yeah. game over. Uh, but yeah, um, we'll get started. You, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously... It's a Thor set. It's Asgardian. So 001 is Thor, 75 points. He's part of the Shifting Focus Thors. So you kind of have to gauge whether you like this figure also based on what else he can do. I will say 
um, comparatively to like the Wonder Woman ones, these guys are not going to like hold up. They're not as cool. They're not as good, period. Um, but this Thor is, I mean, he's a pretty heavy hitter for 75 points. You can see his stats if you're watching, but he's got 12 for four top dial. And then uh, he only has one click where he's an 11 for three. And then the rest of his dial, he has close combat expert. So he's almost always dealing four damage. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty solid. And he's not a bad Avenger, like, to add to your team. He's got two lightning bolts. 75 points is pretty steep, but some of the other shifting focus ones don't have move and attack top dial, so that's probably the main reason I would field him if he gets pulled. But yeah, um, casually, great for new players. I mean, it's just a super basic dial. This could be anyone that's strong. Uh, he does have, like, flight, but, like, could literally be anyone. And then, uh, competitively, I don't see this ever doing anything. Uh, but in sealed, I mean, yeah, play it if, if you've got it as an option. Right on. Next up, 002 is Captain America. Breaks my heart a little bit, uh, what I'm going to have to say about this Captain America, but he is very bland, very boring, and very bad. Uh, 60 points does get you 7 clicks of life, which is a bit of a plus here. Uh, he's 6 range, 2 targets. He is not really range based though. It's a very close combat heavy Captain America. He's kind of about, you know, charge. Uh, yeah, charge, close combat expert later in the dial. Uh, his leadership. Just a very basic bland dial. There are better Captain Americas for less points. Um, the only reason I think I would ever play this Captain America in sealed is maybe if you're hurting for a leadership or something, mm. fill out the Avengers keyword. He's not a terrible, like, attacker. She's an 11 for three, but he's just not good. For 60 points, he's just really, just really, really bad. He's not doing anything crazy cool. He's not doing anything crazy neat. Um, not every Captain America with a longer than average dial is going to make me pog. So, I mean, maybe if he was eight clicks long, it'd be like, all right, it's boring, but it's eight clicks, sure. Um, but yeah, I think the only reason I would ever play this Captain America is to try to land on click three and be a 12 for four, yeah. I guess, with close combat expert. Those middle clicks are probably where he's like, ah, it's actually really only that one middle click where he's the best because the rest yeah. of them just kind of give him an 11 His for damage three. damage drops, so yeah. It's, yeah, his damage drops. So this Captain America is really, really rough. I, I can't really recommend him anywhere. I mean, he's, he's garbage competitive. Uh, he's not good for casual, and he's just yeah. uh, bland and boring. There's better Captain America, so I honestly would not recommend picking up this piece, as much as it hurts for me to say that. Yeah. Definitely depends on what you pull in Sealed, obviously, but, I mean, yeah, Shield I mean, I think might you, be, if you've got, like, three could be people. Useful. Yeah, three people that have, like, wild card. That'd be really cool. Yeah, uh, are there three people with wild card in this set? Uh, Spider-Man. Oh, I think, sure. I think there might be. I think, okay. yeah. We could pull I think there's off. a couple, but I mean, whether or not you could there's pull enough to make it like actually worth playing a figure just for that. Who yeah. knows? Um, next up is another shifting focus. This is the common vision. Uh, <laughs> vision. <laughs> vision. Uh, this is the common vision. 65.6 range. Again, hard to play. Jeez. Uh, hard to play if you don't pull the rest of them, and you're almost guaranteed not to pull like a set of visions. From what I've seen, I mean, maybe certain bricks will have like a common and uncommon in this like same booster, but yeah. uh, it's not something to bank on. And if we look at it as like, is it a good standalone piece? Well, it's a ten for three with close combat expert and six range, so it could be an eleven for four top dial with three clicks of impervious. Pretty solid for 65 points. Destroys blocking when it moves through it and flies. Um, of course, the shifting focus thing. And then the speed power for the whole dial is when vision is given a move action after resolutions, you may deal an adjacent opposing character one damage. I actually don't like this one as much as the one of the other ones. But I will say there's plenty of little support characters that don't have reducers in this set. Um so, like, it's possible to work. And then down dial, he's got poison. Obviously, you can't combo those. I mean, you could. You'd have to, like, be next to him, poison, then move through him. So you could do stuff like that. But uh, most of the time, if you're already next to somebody, you're going to want to try and get that three damage in with his ten attack. Just kind of disappointing stats as far as attack goes. And then, again, one of those characters without movement attack. Not great in sealed. Uh, not great and constructed outside of the fact that he can 
use shifting focus and some of the other visions are kind of cool. Um, but again, like if someone's new to the game, it's a great, you know, I want my, uh, Wanda vision pieces. So, you know, there's that right. whole aspect and the sculpt's not uh, bad. No, can't see it on the screen, but right. <laughs> Uh, speaking of WandaVision pieces, next up is his lovely wife, the Scarlet Witch. Now, this chick, she's a beast. I love this Scarlet Witch. She is giving me a um, mad, very first carded Avengers set Scarlet Witch vibes, and I love it. Uh, four range, one target, flight, uh, Avengers, Latveria, mystical, young Avengers. Why did you say all our keywords, Calder? Well, this is why. Uh, she has phasing teleport, her special speed power, her entire dial. Passenger 3, but only to carry characters she can share a keyword with. So Avengers, Latveria, Mystical, Young Avengers. I could maybe see her on a Latveria team, honestly, but she's just good. She also has telekinesis and probability control top dial. And then she's only four clicks long. But her last two clicks, she also gets barrier. But she hasn't prob her entire dial. She's got TK, her top two clicks. She's a great carrier. Passenger 3, 10 speed, 30 points. She's an Avenger, so she's got plus one speed. I mean, she's moving your whole team 11, not your whole team, but three characters uh 11 squares is pretty awesome uh in a set like this for sealed um avengers is a popular enough keyword and then mystical is also popular enough in this set where i wouldn't worry too much about not being able to pull that off if not she's still a crazy awesome you know tk prob doesn't go wrong i mean i think i don't know what it's going to be like competitively but she's incredibly solid like this to me is like a five star figure in my opinion 30 yeah. points for prob TK, carry ability, 10 squares, three characters. I I absolutely love this character. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's only a few steps behind, like, the super rare, super rare chip uh, from Wonder Woman as far as taxis right. go. Just a little, yeah, a yeah. little bit, yeah. Um, like, obviously, it's not, like, perfect, carry but for many, 30 points yeah. and, like, being able to, like, that Latveria, Avengers, Mystical, those are, like, all solid keywords. Uh, that's a yeah, definitely a piece to look out for, and it's in a common slot. So, and then I mean, yeah. paying thirty points for prob and sealed is always a decent idea. And there oh, yeah. are there are oh, common yeah. pieces that with the TK, like with this TK, have full map reach. Like so, mm -hmm. if I mean, if you really want to do that in sealed, you can do that. Do but, it. Do it. Do it. Uh, next up. Uh, is the executioner? Um, you can't see the sculpts, but what a boring sculpt! Bad, really bad. We really talked bad. about this before. I when will we say, first ever saw it, we were like, "What a terrible sculpt!" Yeah. So he's the same as what's in the Fast Forces or whatever, just standing there with like the axe in his like hands, like not like swinging it or doing anything cool. Um, also, the textures that they're st all the figures are standing on. So in Wonder Woman 80th, I think is when they introduced that, right? Or were they doing that in the Fantasy? Yeah, yeah, no, it was 80th. It was okay. 80th, yeah. So and when they started doing like the grass, the the rock, the concrete, like different stuff like that, it was kind of cool. This set is just flat colored, so it's like a flat green blob that like Thor is standing on, a flat gray blob that like executioners on it's very off-putting and weird um to the point where i would have preferred like the old style of just like the black base over like the weird untextured it's like when you're playing a game and you're running too fast and it can't render like what you're running on fast enough anymore <laughs> so then it's just like yeah. you're on gray like <laughs> oh good um but besides that 90 points gets you a pretty solid attacker. He's not by any means the best figure in the common section, but two lightning bolts, solid stats, almost his whole dial. A um, lot of longevity because of the steel energy and the flurry and stuff in the middle of the dial. And then his reducers oddly go down and then back up to impervious bottom dial. So honestly he's hard to play because he's a huge chunk of your build and he just offers not a lot, but that masters of evil is really solid. And again, if you can find some wild card figures, um, like you don't have to all have, it's just like PD. You don't all have to have masters of evil. Uh, he, anyone that's adjacent to him and the opposing character that he's next to benefit from that. And that's pretty big. Assuming your opponent's not got like guardians because then it doesn't work. But otherwise it's pretty big. Uh, especially in sets with like no uh, perplex or anything like that, it uh, it helps a lot to be able to reduce defense values. 
Um, but that being said, yeah, he just is what he is. Like, he's a pretty standard close combat piece. Kind of like how I said about Thor, you couldn't distinguish this figure from really any other figure. The only thing yeah. that, that gives him any kind of flavor is the uh, steel energy mid dial. And right. yeah, I don't know. I guess in Solid. sealed, I'd say a three. Uh, probably won't ever play him in constructed, especially the mighty Thor one is so much better. And yeah, yeah, I think it's still a solid pick. I mean, nine clicks long, you know, five, no, yeah, five or shoot, uh, six clicks of the dial have <laughs> steel energy. It's just really, really solid. He, you know, only has a 10 attack on one click of life. So yeah, you know, start with an 11 for four. I think it's a fairly solid executioner. And, you know, and if you're doing it as guardian or, potentially a warrior build here in sealed i'm like solid absolutely solid pick um next up black panther now for half the points uh still also a really solid dial black panther 45 points avengers fantastic four ruler wakanda warrior all good keywords i think to have warrior avengers being the best one in sealed um three clicks of stealth flurry down dial with some outwit super senses but he's just uh stealth blades combat reflexes top dial really simple mm -hmm. black panther 11 for three um, once again, it's kind of the same thing as that Captain America. We've had more interesting Black Panthers. We've had Black Panthers around the same cost that do cooler stuff. It's just a very simple Black Panther. He does have Rally. Uh, so it's, really quick, it's one of the rally. worst rallies. It, it is one of the worst rallies, but I'm just going to read off the Rally text really quickly so that way we all know what Rally does. We don't have to say it again. Uh, so he's got Rally. Whenever a dice roll, for this guy it's friendly. So it's either friendly rolls, friendly attack rolls, Opposing attack rolls are all attack rolls. If a whatever number for rally pops up, you get to place that one on this character's card. So this is whenever friendly character attacks and they roll a one, um, an opposing character, whenever they use leadership, you may remove the one and replace the D6 with the result. And then he himself has leadership. So he is a 45-point cheap stealth combat reflexes leadership and sealed so he's not going to go out very easily i don't think there's a lot of improved targeting hindering in this no, set which is I, really I was nice. just going to say that i don't think or, there's hardly any yeah so that is pretty solid but the rally just lets you automatically make an opposing character fail leadership it's, it's bad it's really bad but yeah he's fine he's a solid um close combat attacker no moving attack sucks but he can also be used to block lines of fire in sealed um for casual uh, i'm just gonna give it a meh for sealed yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's solid for Avengers filling out a good cheap leadership. Yeah. Pretty solid pick, I'd say, in sealed. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of these blank spaces on dials where there's no, like, flavor or powers or anything. Um, but I will say I played this Black Panther in both of my sealed events. Like, he was part of, like, my okay. force in both. And, yeah, that stealth combat reflexes. Uh, he's a great tie-up piece for 45 points. He's surprisingly decent length dial not a lot of stuff is going to ko him in one hit and then he rolls onto like super senses which is awesome or you know he's got like flurry outwit so like next turn he's dealing damage to most people like it's only two but yeah he he was surprisingly good i never once used their like rally die and one game uh there was like multiple games but like he was the only rally one character or the only rally character i had in my second event uh, at all and so he did get rally dies but like leadership popping off is already kind of not like rare but in sealed it's not like obviously yeah. not going to happen a ton and then having a character that can negate it it's just like it seems so niche um, we will get to someone who's got a much better rally here in just a little bit but next up is Loki I actually didn't see any of these get pulled um, which is surprising but yeah, this Loki is solid. 50 points, Mystics, and Prob top dial. I mean, she's got flight, all kinds of stuff. Uh, in sealed, obviously won't be able to use the illusions and trickery thing, but in constructed, that is a really fun mechanic, and he's mystical deity as guardian, so you can combine him with, I mean, obviously people have already noticed this, but you can combine him with the Doctor Fates that do a very similar thing. So I think it's for what is it five or more so for uh that would be 90 points you get plus two action total and um you do that by adding the 10 point ones which have a single click but now you have you have five characters with prob on your team which is just nuts like 
that's a lot of prob for 90 points and that's a lot of actions for 90 points and then even like the 10 point guys if your opponents i mean if they're playing anything out of the most recent sets they might not even be able to reduce the mystics damage so you're at least doing that to them but no solid stats solid powers um would have been cool to like have blades or something but obviously this is like an economy piece so yeah, yeah it's just it is what it is it's also i guess worth noting it's probably the closest thing that we have to a generic in the set which is lame, yeah but it really sucks i mean for a set that's like as guardians and yeah, a war <laughs> a war yeah so i mean we could have had a frost giants we could have had random marauders random as guardians there were these angel characters that i think were like made up in the run before or the this mm. run or whatever you could have those as generic that's like the realm where really angel is from or not from yes yeah 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 from. no it's it's it is that realm though yeah um by the way real quick hot take this loki is absolutely better than dr fate like no question in my opinion i think I, yeah so in they do my different opinion things. They do different things, and I think Loki's better. Yeah, if you're gonna run five versus five, like you know, if I'm just gonna put them head to head, the Lokis are gonna take it most of the time. Absolutely. Do Doctor Fates pack a huge punch? Yes. Do Lokis have way more of a chance of hitting and um, not being hit? Yes, because like that, yeah. just an absolute garbage amount of prob is way better than a ton of enhancement, in my opinion. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, I think if, then, if I if you asked anybody off the street that plays Hero Clicks, be like, what power do you think is better, probability control or enhancement? They're gonna say probability control nine times out of ten. Yeah. So if you try to tell me that you think Doctor Fate is better than Loki, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> Anyways, I think uh, Loki's Spider Man also cheaper. He is cheaper. He's 15 points less than uh, the original cost for Doctor Fate. So he's 50 points, and so you waste less points of your team build to get up to your plus two actions. Yeah. And then, I don't know, once again, I just think positioning being what it is, you don't want to waste that many actions on these guys. They can carry each other, just like Dr. Fates can carry each other. But it's easier to get into a position for prob than it is for enhancement. It just is, because prob's yeah. a range power. Anyways, Spider-Man here, Miles Morales here. Uh, pretty solid dial. I like what he does. Simeon, you played him. Uh, he's yeah. charge, quake, outwit, top dial. He's a 11-11, 18-3 with four range, two targets, Spider-Man team ability, so he can copy. He's got Avengers, Shield, Spider-Man, Family, and Champions, all good keywords, Avengers being the best one for Sealed in this set. Prove movement elevated, like Spider-Man should. Then he's got Super Senses traded, and then friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Avengers keyword can use Super Senses. I think if you have an Avengers team in Sealed or have a lot of Avengers on your team, you got to play this Spider-Man. I mean, he gives every character with the Avengers keyword Super Senses anywhere on the map or just friendly adjacent characters. I, I just, I yeah. like this. And with a set with no precision strike, also he's an outwit. I think a sealed pick, he's like a top tier sealed pick for sure. And then like casually, I think he's really, really awesome. And I think there may be a potential competitive thing, but 60 points is a lot to ask. So I don't, I wouldn't hold my breath on competitive for the Spider-Man, but casually, heck yeah, sealed, absolutely. I think if you pull him, you'll, you should be hard pressed to not play him. His down dial isn't amazing, uh, it's very weird, plasticity barrier exploit. Um, but he does have, you know, some solid 11 attacks throughout his dial. A lot of 18 defense on his dial. You know, super senses the whole time. You know, I, I do like it a lot. I wish he had toughness, you know, on those first three clicks. But besides that, man, what an awesome Spider-Man figure. Yeah. No, I, like Calder said, in sealed, this is an instant play for me. Um, the amount of times that this character alone, like, saved my team... Like, just because that Super Sense roll was, I mean, it was a lot. And uh, it's super easy, at least for me, it was super easy to make Avenger theme teams um, in this sealed. And, uh, yeah, we'll see a few other figures that really, it's just so uh, synergetic to, like, have Avengers that are all boosting each other in, like, different ways. And, yeah, solid attacker. I mean... The move and attack, had it just been like like Black Panther with stealth top dial or something, probably yep. wouldn't like this character as much. But the fact that I can actually like charge six squares, uh, I can, you know, copy PD or um, Masters of Evil or like whatever with the Spider-Man team ability, it's pretty solid. 
And then uh, speaking of giving him toughness, top dial Calder, we have the common Hulk who is kind of a good sculpt, kind of weird, but like kind of like a really solid sculpt. Um, so the Hulk has traded invulnerability and then friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Avengers keyword can use toughness. So similar to Spider-Man, a little bit more expensive, but similar to Spider-Man, if you're already building an Avengers team, I think this Hulk is a solid add, not the best. It's kind of expensive for what it does. We'll see some 70 point or around 70 point figures that do much better jobs. Um, but the average damage in this set is three to four and having traded invulnerability and then maybe potentially like super senses um, knocking this Hulk to click three or four yeah. is going to really set your opponent in like a bad situation. I did get to click five with him once because I did play him in one of my builds and having a 12 for five was real solid. It was like, it helped me take down a destroyer, a Donald Blake who both have impervious and it yeah. just, you know, really uh, he's obviously a figure you're going to throw out at, to your opponent like to kind of bait them to um obviously like try and get them to hit him or to like body block because he's not good until that happens and i will say in the matches where he didn't get hit right away he was almost worthless that 10 for 3 is not great and that's all he does on those clicks yeah, uh, but yeah we have better hulks in sealed he's okay he's like an option for sure um and like constructed i probably am gonna pass on him like his dial is just not that mm. interesting to me and in constructed uh next up we have nebula love this dial i really like it for an economy 50 points we got six range top dial she's an eight speed 11 attack three damage 17 defense esd with running shot pen blast just ah oh, just solid she alternates uh five clicks long and then she has two clicks somewhere in there of stealth combat reflexes and blades so it goes running shot and then stealth blades, running shot, stealth blades, and running shot, and then that's it for a dial. But very solid combat values, uh, very solid like powers, and then her trait is uh, just free, heal nebula one click. So it lets you, again, control. Now it's a very short dial, it's 50 points, five right. clicks long, so she can very easily get one shot, make no mistake about that. But I think if you play it right, play it correctly, she does have Guardians, so that means they can't PD down her or perplex down her defense value, which is going to help her from getting shot at least a little bit. Um, and then free Heal Nebula one click is can help her stick around, or at the very least, maybe not stick around as much, but uh, let you choose where you want to be at in the dial since it is free right. Heal one click. I, I really like it. Sure, I wish it were six clicks, um, but I think it's a really solid seal pick. I mean, just a running shot pen blast like this is really, really awesome. Yeah, and then really... constructed. Got to be fun with the Guardians team. Sorry, go oh, ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely fun. Uh, I really do like the the fact that the healing is free instead of like mm. at the beginning of your turn or something like that. Because yeah, it gives you so much more control. Uh, if my opponent knocked me to like a stealth click and I want that running shot back, I can heal before I like take an action. If yeah. uh, I'm on running shot and I want to be able to like running shot psychic blast someone and then I end in like hindering, I can free heal into like stealth. Obviously she does have to be hit first for this to matter at all, but of course. Yeah, it's, you know, it's solid. I think it's a decent little 50 points and it's uh, definitely a fun guardians piece. Uh, yeah. Next up is probably my favorite common in this set. Um, just an absolute banger of a trait. So this is Black Widow, number 11 in the set. 50 points, team player, so she can copy any of the other team abilities we've kind of listed before. Four range, triple lightning bolts, sidestep top dial, combat reflexes top dial, uh, three clicks of outwit, which is super solid for 50 points in this set. There's so much impervious that I got around because of this figure alone. Mm. Improved movement ignores characters, which also comes in super handy, not like being locked down or whatever. Um, and then her trait is wait for the perfect opportunity. Uh, stealth, and then friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Avengers keyword can use stealth. So your entire Avengers build, and this... This really sways games. There's some decent range pieces in this set. There's very little improved targeting, targeting hindering. Uh, on the right map, this Black Widow can single-handedly like win you a game before like the match even starts because 
you're just at a huge advantage. It's like playing an entire team of, uh, like Batman family, you know, it's just this huge advantage that if your opponent doesn't have like enough close pieces and then, I mean, she's a 19 for close. So there's also that, um, when I was playing her this last time, I had her copy the Guardians of the Galaxy team ability because that's not uncopyable. Okay. And so yeah. you can't even reduce her defense. So she's just like a 19 in stealth, not a lot of uh, seize through hindering. And constructed, I think she's fine and constructed for 50 points. I think she brings enough to the table. She's not super competitive by any means. Avengers, Champions, Martial Artists, Shield, Spy, Thunderbolts. Obviously, if I'm playing her in any kind of build, it's going to be Avengers to really take advantage of her trait. Right. But uh, yeah, and then down dial, she, you know, if she lands on click four or click five, she's got three damage with close combat expert, super senses, and charge. Um, yeah. And then she, I mean, traded stealth. So she's always able to uh, that just end in hindering. Um, but yeah, her combined with the next figure. Um, is super gross and sealed like not yeah. for any particular reason but just because the the amount of sway it gives you over like your opponent's ability to actually do anything to you right uh and the next up we have hawkeye aka kate bishop this is like oh tier one sealed pick i, so I absolutely love this uh eight range triple targets 50 point character by the way Eight range, triple target, special speed, power, running shot, sidestep, with eight speed. So that is a six square, 14 square reach if we fully extend, or a 12 square reach with a little sidestep, get back into safety. Biggest thing, though, 12 attack, three damage, penetrating psychic blast. Oh, baby, I love that. That's awesome. So I got a running shot with a 14 square reach with three targets, and I'm a 12 attack, three damage with penetrating psychic blast. I freaking love it. Now, this this is the one time where that Captain America that we talked about earlier that is shield, all of a yeah. sudden really worth a lot. Because so far, once again, the only shield we found so far in this set. You get him, you get a Black Widow, this Hawkeye, the commons. Shooting for five. Absolutely slap. <laughs> like, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Like, the stuff you can do with this. Get that Hawkeye four damage, whatever, like, with any enhancement or anything you can get. I think an awesome casual piece. I think, once again, a tier one sealed pick. Uh, competitive, I mean, like, no. Of course, no. No. But the defense still, isn't there. But... The defense isn't there, you know? But And then when this Hawkeye, let's say this Hawkeye gets punked for some damage, um, always has an 11 attack the whole dial. Yeah. And then she does move on to just sidestep energy explosion later. Still, really solid attacker. Someone gets in close, sure, you're an 11 for three, a 12 for three down dial. No problem. Uh, I love it. I love this figure. I mean, I, I hope to pull one tonight. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I pulled this one. I didn't pull this one the first time, but I did pull it the second time that I played. And um, yeah, I mean, you can combine this figure with Spider-Man, Hulk, Black Widow, like any of those previously mentioned ones and give yep. it a little bit more longevity. But just that eight range. You know what that eight range outrange is in this set, Calder? The super rare everything? destroyer. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, Super Destroyer dog. only has seven range, so oh, I actually went up against take one. Up some freaking archery lessons, <laughs> yeah. big nerd. I went up against one, and it was like twelve into the nineteen impervious, and I'm like, "Good old Kate Bishop, bow and arrow, destroying as guardian magical armor suit, like is pretty nuts." Um, but yeah, about. super super solid. And then, like I said previously, with Scarlet Witch, with that TK, uh, what is that six? Plus sidestep, plus that's four. twenty square reach. Yeah, twenty square reach. Yeah, you can hit, almost hit your opponent's starting twenty area. squares reach yeah. when you start in the second square of the map. Yeah, uh, twenty two square reach. Yeah, that's pretty uh, nuts. Thank you for sealed. <laughs> pretty nuts. Um, next up, I kind of like this figure um, for a couple reasons. So I did play this one in my first uh, sealed event, and I didn't play it in the second because I didn't pull it. Uh, but 60 points, this is Blade, uh, number 013 in the set. Got the team player, so again, can copy those previously mentioned powers, Avengers, uh, Police, uh, Guardians, Shield, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just a close combat piece. You've got Charge Blades for the first three clicks. You've got Toughness. You've got 
go the middle three clicks go to combat reflexes you get flurry you get uh regen on click six no damage powers uh just blades for the first three clicks but solid damage values you've got three damage the whole dial you yeah. only have two clicks where you go down to a 10 attack out of six um and then you've got two two lightning bolts with six range which is not great but it's i mean if you can see someone and you don't have charge anymore you can still attack at least uh so Blade's big thing is uh, he's got a rally trait, just traded steel energy. So the whole dial, you have the potential to heal up. And then when Blade would be KO'd by an opposing character, you instead remove one of Blade's rally dies. And this is opposing attack rolls. If you do, turn him to click six, protect a pulse wave. I never really got this to pop off. Um, I just, yeah, I just wasn't paying attention to like dice very much. But I did see a game where someone was playing this figure and had like five or six dice stacked on Blade's card. Because the great thing about this Rally 5 in this sealed environment is we're out of, what was the first set with it, uh, Rise and Fall? Rise and we're, Fall. We're out of Rise and Fall where everyone had the red Rally 5s. So in this sealed environment, it's actually rare. So anytime a rec an opposing character rolls a 5 you might as well give it to Blade because he's probably the only one with that Rally 5. Whereas in Rise well, and Fall, it was everyone had it, so you had to decide between it. But yeah, this this Blade just becomes unkillable. Like your opponent just can't score him in Sealed, uh, potentially. Um, but yeah. Is it, it's, uh, sorry, is it Rally 5 or Rally 6? On HC Realms, it says 6. Clicks Nexus, oh, it says 5. I'm pretty um, sure it's 5. 5? See, I, I was like, yeah. maybe because he goes to click 6, I could see 6. Because, like, he's not, like, yeah. a mutant person. Yeah, I But I, I also of kind of... I, I do have the card. I also kind of believe, you know, HC Realms a little bit more when it comes to accuracy. <laughs> so, yeah. I might um, have to pull right, up the, the dial and evidence I thread and see. I do like this blade, though. Um, yeah. Herc Ulees, our, our Disney... Uh, he's not a prince, but Disney character here. Uh, Hercules is just, again, he's... He's like Executioner, but just better uh, in a, in some ways. In some ways, not so much. So Guardians of the Oxygen ability. So he's no you know no negifying, negative modifying his combat values. Improved movement destroys blocking. That's all he's got um, for anything special at all. He's got two targets, zero range. He is a 11 speed charge, 11 attack with nothing, 18 defense impervious, and three damage. Close combat expert top dial. Uh, he has three damage his entire dial, so he's doing four damage except on his last three clicks, where he is a flurry steel energy piece, which is very solid in the last three clicks. He's 100 points. He's just a 100-point beat stick. Um, it's it's a rough investment to make in a charge like figure for sealed. Um, however, he does live a very long time. It, it It's nothing special, nothing flashy. However, if you want to only pay 65 points for him, he does get uh, much, much worse for the 35 <laughs> points you save. Well, uh, losing only... the the movement attack is just yeah. Losing charge and going down to plasticity top dial. I I couldn't not recommend this enough to not do this. So 100 point Hercules. You know what? He hits hard. He lives a long time. I would say if you got no other better 100 points, he is pretty solid. He does have some flurry down dial. He's got close combat expert the whole time. Um, he can tie somebody up and just keep going blow for blow. Hercules is pretty solid. Uh, Defo, try to protect him. You know, there's there's stuff that can deal this dude a lot of damage and take him right off that charge. That Kate Bishop we just talked about, a few yeah. other characters, you know. Um, and also, yeah. That's why Black so Widow is so necessary. <laughs> Make necessary. sure you pull Black Widow. <laughs> Make no, sure you but... pull. I mean, he has the Avengers keyword. Yeah. He also has Champions, Defenders. De Deity is probably his... Uh, Deity, Warrior, and Avengers is probably his best keywords for Sealed. Um, but Herc is, is fine. I think in a high point casual game, he'll be fun. Definitely not competitive. Um, but, you know, a, a maybe sealed pick. He's kind of like a mid-tier sealed. Like, if you pull him, he's not bad. He's not crazy. I will say, yeah, there's not a ton of pen damage for close. So, as long as he can close the gap, like, he probably gets his impervious rolls. Um, there's a lot of psychic blast in this set, though. Next up yeah. is probably... I think probably the best 55 points you can spend in this set. And that's saying a lot, but mm. dang, Lady Sif is number 015. Traded Flurry, so she's got a Rally 1, same as Black Panther. Uh, friendly friendly attack rolls if you roll a 1. 
Um, free remove one of Lady Sif's rally dice to make an attack. So obviously, even if you have a stack of them, you can only do that once. But traded flurry. So on click one, she's charged blades with uh, invuln and leadership. So leadership's great for 55 points. Two targets with no range. As guardian Avengers deity warrior. So the Avengers, the whole thing that we talked about with you know stealth, super senses, all of that stacks with her. But you can charge Flurry. Uh, she's got eight speed, so you're you're not charging super far, but you can charge Flurry Blades. Uh, on click two and three, she goes to an eleven attack with sidestep and close combat expert. So now she has uh, Flurry with a twelve for four. Uh, back on click four, she goes back to charge Blades. So once again, and also with all of these clicks she can potentially remove so she can like flurry roll a one in one of those attacks get that rally die make a third attack that same turn mm. um but like yeah she's almost always going to be able to make attacks not always but i mean pretty often she's going to be able to make attacks even when she's double tokened and then her last two clicks she's got exploit with a 10 attack so man she, she just keeps like doing damage there's actually one point where i had I was playing against her, so I pulled her in my first sealed, and then and the second one I didn't. Uh, in the first one, she was obviously like one of my main damage dealers. That flurry blades, that uh, just close combat expert, having like a guaranteed four damage. But in the second one, I played against this figure, and I had Nova and I think I had Nova and Hawkeye left. And uh, I had knocked this Lady Sif to click 5. So she's got combat reflexes, 10 attack, 3 damage with exploit. And I was like, oh no. Like, <laughs> my Nova. <laughs> he has, you know, <laughs> reducers. Uh, this Lady Sif managed to flurry and kill the Hawkeye. Got a rally die. Right. Did the second attack on Nova. Knocked him down 3. And then cashed in the rally die. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like... I had this 55 point figure on click five with two figures that were like almost top dial and I'm going to lose to Lady Sif. And uh, luckily, you know, for me, um, missed the last attack and then Nova was able to like, like break away and shoot. Um, but yeah, just a super solid 55 points in this set. And especially if you pull other good Avenger stuff, it makes this figure so much better that getting that super senses or stealth, all of that stuff, man, just, and I'll, honestly, I'll probably build with this lady Sif in constructed as well. Like, Oh yeah. I could do like an Asgardian or Avengers build with, I mean, even two of them, like 110 points for those kind of stats with flurry. That's just a ton of attacks. I mean, obviously you can only give one rally die out, but you're making double the attacks with two, uh, but yeah, really solid figure. Right on. Next up, we have Spider-Man. This is the uh, sword shield, funny little helmet. Uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. As Peter Guardian Parker. Scientist, Spider-Man family. So best keyword for sealed being as Guardian. Proof movement elevated. Uh, he has traded ESD and toughness. So he's pretty defensive, which is nice. And he's got a full dial of super senses. 75 points. He's He falls off the wagon pretty quickly um after his first two clicks he's 11 for three top dial with charge so charge esd you know it's a close combat piece with esd is already not not awesome uh exploit is a little new for peter parker that's kind of neat but off on somebody if you charge quake exploit their whole team right away could be really solid um 75 points is a little bit of a big ask for stuff like that but um the bad thing about this guy is that he just tanks, man. So he's got, after those first two clicks, it's 10 attack, 2 damage. And then on even this last click, he goes to a 9 attack with a 15 yeah. defense. Um, he just, he falls off pretty hard. Um, for, so For 20 for points sealed, less than Lady Sif. 20 points more yeah, than Lady or, Sif. Sorry, sorry, 20 yeah. points more than yeah, Lady yeah, Sif, yeah. Um, I, it's I do really not rough. like this dial nearly as much. Uh, it sucks they're right next to each other. It sucks to talk about them one after the other. I, I don't think he's terrible in sealed. I think he's a solid charge quake exploit figure. But just don't let him get tapped right away. I mean, hopefully, though, with ESD, 20 from range, 
uh, in Super Senses, he won't get tapped right away, so he should theoretically um, be able to make at least one attack and then kind of be annoying the rest of the time, but he's, he's not great. It's uh, This is why Simeon should be using HC Realms, because we have a comment here from John Tron Official. Yeah. Uh, garbage. That official? Kill yourself, WizKids. Officially John Tron? Officially John Tron. He says it's garbage. Kill yourself, WizKids. John like... Tron makes some comments on some other figures in this set. They, they really oh, went he? through the oh. game of uh, oh, writing it. comments. I love it. Uh, um, although this John Tron is spelled with an H, and normally John Tron uh, isn't, so I don't know if it's as official as we might think. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, it could the be officially a different one. Uh, yeah. yeah, official different guy who's John So Tron. the commons... Really, like, in sealed, the commons were super solid. Like, that's right. going to be m the majority of what you pull, but I was able to take down some pretty decent-sized figures with just the common stuff. Uh, there's a lot of, like, Lady Sif having so many attacks and blades and, like, damage potential, Hawkeye being get able to get through reducers, because most figures, as you can see with this Thor here, most figures don't have Impervious for more than three clicks. So yeah. the Hawkeye can punch right past those, and then you don't have to worry about them like rolling their impervious when you hit with like close combat expert or whatever. Um, but speaking of this Thor, eight range. So for 125 points, you get the same range as a 50 point lady with a bow. Great. Uh, so this Thor is actually pretty solid for 125 points. Got Asgardian, Avengers, Deity, and Warrior. All great options. Obviously, my pick would be Avengers for sealed. Uh, can improve targeting. Uh, through characters, not out of adjacency, so just through characters. Uh, one trait, not good, not the God of Hammers. When Thor hits with a ranged attack, after resolutions, he may use Energy Explosion as free, but must target a hit character. Really solid, like, follow-up option. Um, there's going to be a lot of grouping and sealed normally because, like, leadership and carrying and stuff like that. And that 8 range, he's got 11 speed top dial with running shot, so you're going 14 squares, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and then four damage, so you're probably going to just nuke something. Uh, it's pretty solid. And that's his whole dial. His whole dial is he's got leadership top dial. He's got that running shot for the first three clicks. The rest of the dial is sidestep. His whole dial of penetrating psychic blast, that traded uh, ranged attack energy explosion thing. And then his reducers go from impervious for the first three to invuln to two clicks of regen on the bottom end and the rarest power in this set that I've seen enhancement for the last four clicks, <laughs> which yeah. I hate late dial enhancement, but I mean, heck yeah, I'll take bad. it. Like, I don't know for 125 points. If you don't pull well enough to like have a solid little mini army, uh, this guy really pulls his weight um, in a way where it's like, you know, probably can't go toe to toe with like the Odin armor or whatever the heck that character's called, or, like, the Destroyer. But at the same right. time, like, if he manages to get a hit in with that 8 range, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I, I really like this Thor as, like, a solid main attacker for Sealed. Uh, moving on to someone who's the opposite of a solid main attacker, we have the uh, 0018 Captain America for 45 points. Um, he's a little charge piece, although so much better than his predecessor in stats and points and just everything, everything, uh, for once again, 15 less points than the other Captain America. So what's he do? He's got three clicks of charge, then he's got three clicks of sidestep. He's got three clicks of toughness and then three clicks of regen. So he's probably sticking around pretty well. Uh, for the first five clicks of his dial, he has an 11 attack, which is awesome. And then he has three damage for the first four clicks of his dial pretty pretty solid um he has a special damage power the entire length of his dial which is avengers assemble uh leadership captain america is on an avengers theme team increases leadership result by one so it could be potentially 50 50 leadership nothing crazy nothing new for captain okay, america's yeah. that we've seen yeah it's pretty solid so 45 point leadership avengers soldier keywords very nice very nice uh but the big thing he does is he has the recruiter power so I'm going to read all of Recruiter, so that way we don't have to ever read it again. Um, and then we can just say what keywords it does. So Captain America's Recruiter works off of the Avengers keyword. Recruiter is as follows. Power. Choose a character with the Avengers keyword in your KO area that hasn't been chosen or generated by a Recruiter effect. If you do, generate a character with the Avengers keyword from your sideline that has a lower point value than the chosen character. This game, the generated character can't be replaced and your opponent scores them immediately instead of when they're KO'd. 
So, out of some cool things. Generate, you place them right next to this Captain America. Your opponent will score them right away, but you do get a top dial figure of your choosing from the sideline as long as it meets the whole point requirements. Right. So, potentially, depending on what dies, let's say your 125 point Thor dies, and you're like, okay, well, now I'm going to bring in I I don't know. Let's say Hercules. first, yeah, hundred point Hercules yeah. for a punch, really quick, right? They instantly score a hundred points. Hopefully that doesn't mercy rule you into losing. But if it doesn't, I think that can give you a pretty good edge, uh, being able to potentially just take something out right away. And you've got that Hercules on your board. Um, and then as long as you're not in fear of like points and going to time and whatever, I think absolutely do this. It's it's a for a casual game for a sealed game. I'm not too scared of Recruiter if you're in a good spot to do it. I think that's definitely fine. Um, competitively, with what has to happen to, for Recruiter to do it, and other people, somebody better than me, might figure out how to break Recruiter by all means. Yeah. But right now, it does not It does not wet my whistle. It doesn't really yeah. speak to me that much. But this Captain America, I think very solid. Very solid and sealed. You know, 11 for 3, a charge figure, an Avengers figure, a leadership is great, 45-point leadership. And then I think the recruiter power is actually pretty solid because there's so many Avengers figures in this set. You might just have to put some on your sideline. So, and with this power, that's totally fine. So yeah. I like this Captain America a lot for sealed and casual. Recruiter, yeah, so recruiter's not quite as, I think it's more expensive than Kukoan Revival. Um, it's not quite as efficient as like Swap. Because swap right. is like, you know, it's like I'm like, oh, my right. opponent has a ton of uh, range and I want to get like this Black Widow on my team. I can't just nuke one of my characters and like recruit in Black Widow. Um, so it's not, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, it's a little bit of a Hail Mary potentially where if you're down, but like you got your opponent like real close to where like you're going to be able to get, to get them taken out. Then, yeah. you know, and you don't have to use recruiter. Like, you can have it as an option, which is always good. Um, you can have a few sideline figures that, like, you're, you know, you're like, my game plan is I'm going to throw this person out and they're probably going to die. If I'm in a good spot, I call in this person. You know, you don't have to use right. your whole sideline for it, but it is pretty solid. Uh, next up is the uncommon vision of the shifting focus. Ooh, man, I actually talk about both visions. Yeah, I actually like this one more. So the previous one obviously had the special uh, movement power. It had the big reducers and close combat expert. And the special movement power on the common one is deal one damage. This one is density shift phasing teleport. When vision uses it after resolutions, you may give an action token to an opposing character vision move through. That is so much more... Um, useful to me than dealing one damage in a lot of circumstances because if my opponent has a character with one like lady sif for instance she's got one token i don't want her to be able to flurry me next turn i power action this vision through her and don't have to roll an attack or anything i just instantly get that action token on there um this vision does have prob which for 65 points is pretty solid does have poison down dial which isn't as solid uh, but it can fly, it has Avengers, so you can go like nine scores out while carrying someone. It's okay. It's obviously not something I would build with right off the bat, but Avengers robot keyword, it's a fine character um, in Sealed, and it's actually, you know, obviously shifting focus, you have to take all of them into account. So um, with the two that we've seen for Vision, it's something I'd play casually. Uh, don't think it's very competitive at all, but definitely like a casual option yeah no i like it and i will agree again like being able to hand out an action token right away for free is way better than dealing just one little damage unless you somehow get to kill a rinky dink loki right away then absolutely it's awesome uh next up we have the enchantress here she is maybe a bit over costed i think a bit over costed uh for 75 points what do we have uh, six click long dial, six range, two targets. She's Masters of Evil and Mystics. Solid. Um, she's TK and Prob, so 75 point TK and Prob with phasing and ESD top dial. A little rough. Uh, that's her first three clicks. Her second three clicks are Sidestep, Poison, Mastermind, Outwit. Okay. Um, but what she does that's useful is in her trait, which is You Will Love Me. Mind Control. When Enchantress uses it, after resolutions, give each hit character an Allure token if they don't have one already. 
When an opposing character with an allure token attacks the Enchantress, modify their attack and damage minus one. So she's bad. Uh, so Enchantress is bad. Um, I didn't read all of this before we started talking about the figure, but she is awful. Um, <laughs> I, it's I actually only, uh, really like her for uh, yeah. just like the prob and Masters of Evil alone. Right. But other than Not that, I think... 75 points, Simeon. Come now. It's, you can't, it's a lot serious. of investment. But, I mean, Mystics does... Because there's not a lot of like pen reducing, there Mystics actually does kind of do something in this set. Uh, it's kind of bad, but like it also kind of is I don't, not worth seventy five. Obviously, no. um, but you know it's not nothing. Uh, if you are doing like an Asgardian team, this might be. I could fine with an Asgardian team. TK, it might be necessary. Rob. I mean, yeah. Combined with like destroyer or something, she can like TK him out that could be, and, like, that could be good. or TK that could him be back good. or something. Um, there are situations in sealed where she is useful. Uh, I think she her by herself, not not good at all. But in, in sealed certain situations, when a TK is necessary, stuff like that, I can see it. Sorry, the cat is. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> making weird noises. Um, all right, next up is, to go along with Enchantress, is Scourge. Uh, Scourge, maybe. Uh, is it, it's not going to pull it up for me. Uh, so Scourge is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, he's got charge and running shot top dial. How neat is that? No, I like Scourge. I like this one a lot. He's like an economy Scourge, though. 60 points. Charge running shot, pen blast, 11 attack, 3 damage with exploit weakness. So he's doing penetrating damage no matter what way you go. This is the um, Guardians of the Galaxy Scourge. Just real good. Really solid. Later goes on to some sidestep combat reflexes, close combat expert. Totally fine. Um, but yeah, this Scourge as Guardian, Guardians of the Galaxy, Warrior. I like him a lot. I think he's really, really good. I wish he had an 18 top dial and not a 17 toughness, which is super duper rough. Don't get me wrong. But um, this Scourge, I think, is once again kind of like that Nebula, a really good economy piece. It's got running shot, pen blast, or charge exploit. Like it's it's a little bit of a uh, a toolbox figure, which I like. So yeah, I think there's no reason to not play this Scourge. I mean, once again, like I said, it is super rough. I will not tell a lie. That is really garbage. The 17 defense toughness. But if you can keep him safe, if you can get that first shot off, this Scourge is really awesome. Plus, as Guardian Warrior, 60 points. Uh, fills out teams really, really well. Uh, I like him. I like him a lot. See me and you good over there? <laughs> yeah, I had to switch over okay. to HC Realms because Clicks Nexus crashed on me. It just like Whoa, my, my internet browser website? wouldn't load it what? up for some reason. Um, yeah, this. So the charge running shot is uh, something that we see in the uncommons at least twice, and it's a really solid little thing. Um, especially like Caller said, the double uh, option for doing penetrating damage is pretty solid. Um, the defense could be a little better and obviously the keywords aren't like the greatest, but yeah, uh, I'll go, I'll cover the next character since, uh, yeah. it looks like things are back up and running right um, on. on my end. So Groot for 55 points. I never thought I'd see such a cheap Groot. Uh, it's a good sculpt too. Um, so this Groot is not a giant standard sized sidestep for range. 11 attack for the first two clicks goes down to a 10 and then a 9 sadly. Uh, they mm. really kind of did him wrong there but um, for 55 points you get a special attack power the whole dial which is spears and branches. Giant reach 3, quake but deals 3 damage instead of 2 which is real solid. Uh, it would be oh, way yeah. better if he was giant so that you could actually see over characters and hit multiples and stuff but I mean just within 3 and deals 3 damage and then um, he's got that empower for his first three clicks, which is really solid. And solid reducers and pervious that goes to uh, toughness for 55 points is pretty solid. And that late dial uh, exploit where you can combine that with quake and deal three pen damage to multiple characters. Um, if you can get it to pop off for 55 points, really solid. Um, if not, he's got Cosmic and Guardians of the Galaxy, so um, I think in Constructed he's probably better, but if you have to break theme or can't make theme, he's a real solid little close attacker, um, tie-up piece kind of thing. And now we'll we'll get to 
my favorite character. One of the greatest figures ever made. Probably uh, but, in the, at amazing. least in the Uncommons. Yeah. Uh, at least definitely in the Uncommons. Uh, Nova, my man, Richard Ryder, old Dick Ryder here, 70 points, Guardian's team ability, Police team ability, Flight, 6 range, 1 target. He has Charge Running Shot. When he uses Charge, if he has no action tokens, he does not have speed. I love this. This is so dope. Uh, so he's an 11 square solid. reach with Running Shot with Pen Blast, or he's a 10 square reach with Charge with Close Combat Expert. So he's a 12 for 4 coming out 10 squares away if he does not have an action token or still you know run going up five squares punching you really hard and he's got impervious top dial are you kidding me 18 imperv top dial this nova is stacked for 70 points simeon talked about him a little bit before the podcast yeah. i absolutely love him as well i'm in love with this dude um yeah energy explosion second two clicks exploit, either like the avengers got the it. uh the spider-man or uh black widow he becomes right just really help good. him out and then he's got a little bit of a steel energy bottom dial. Not huge, uh, but does, you know, get him back to that charge running shot power, which is nice. Uh, he always has a three damage. He always has an 11 attack. Um, he gives PD for your team. He has guardians, which is just awesome. I, uh, yeah, he is a, I would say once again, tier one sealed pick. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, very solid and casual doesn't have what it takes to be competitive that's okay but like again dude tier one seal pick very solid casual figure yeah uh combined with either a tk or you know i in one of my games i moved him up had black panther next to him uh, i moved him up probably 10 squares or like eight squares or something like that had black panther next to him hit my leadership role all of a sudden nova has no action tokens and my opponents like you know I can just reach anywhere on the map at that point. Yeah. He's yeah. so good uh, with that full, I mean, 12 for four, and we've seen a ton of outwit. They, we haven't seen, I don't think, any protected outwit yet. So it's just um, a real solid investment of points for those keywords, especially if you've got uh, either that, I, I'd say especially with the Black Widow, because Impervious, where you can't be psychic blasted, and... Um, like your opponent just can't really shoot at you with that stealth. That's probably bigger than having another rollout, but honestly, yeah. with both of them, it's great. Uh, number 024, Annabelle Riggs, Dr. Annabelle Riggs, 50 points. Uh, this is the Annabelle Riggs that can swap in for the, um, what is it, Uncommon Valkyrie? Yeah, yeah. the Uncommon Valkyrie. Um, so it's free if An Dr. Annabelle Riggs began the turn your turn on the map replace her with the valkyrie on the same click number and then she's got one thing that's like really cool um so she's sidestep 10 attack two damage energy shield for the first three clicks and then last two clicks are stealth nine attack 16 with combat reflexes and two damage without wit her first three clicks she has not that kind of doctor as a special power it is outwit and when dr annabelle riggs uses it she can choose a number of powers equal to the target's action tokens plus one. Um, really solid. Oh. Really, really solid. Uh, so, She's yeah, like potentially a... three outwits on a single target. Um, and that can really, you know, with like, you know, let's say I'm playing Nova and he's got stealth, he's got super senses from, uh, you know, Spider Man and Black Widow, and I just drop off this Annabelle Riggs, like move her up next to him. Uh, out with the stealth, out with the super senses, out with the impervious because he's got two action tokens. Uh, it's really solid for 50 points, uh, mostly yeah. because you have the option to swap with Valkyrie. I don't know if I would be completely sold on this dial with just that special power, but the, the option to turn it into like an attack piece, a uh, small like attacker, is probably what makes it worth it in sealed. And then in constructed, it's, it's fine. It's fun. It's not going to win like uh states anything. or anything i mean maybe a casual game but scientist as guardian guardians of the galaxy fun keywords to build with uh it's pretty straightforward kind of figure yeah i mean at the very least she is like a double outwit potentially triple to quadruple outwit mm -hmm. that is really cool um and i think that's where a lot of her cost goes into but like at first glance i was like wow what a crazy 30 point character they made cost 50 <laughs> points. Um, yeah. I also, because she's like sort of a secret identity, not really. 
Um, once again, I think there's no reason to not have her be a secret identity. I know technically that's not what happens with her. Like she, she like her soul is connected to Valkyrie or some garbage, and her like yeah. body becomes Valkyrie or whatever in comics. But um, I think she should have autonomous. I think if she was autonomous, I would feel way better paying fifty points that for would, her. Yeah, that would be cool. Autonomous, that would just, and then that would have into a character that's not. Me. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. That'd probably be. I think that'd be worth fifty points by then. I mean, compared to uh, Spider-Man, Venom, Absolute Carnage, some of these characters should be like twenty points less for sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, next up, uh, the man himself. Uh, we're gonna have to make a new top Shang Chi videos. Uh, we have a for new fifty-point Shang Chi. Uh, oh crap! I jumped really far. Wow. Yondu. Uh, we have no oh. top Yondu videos. Yeah, I, th I thought you meant uh, we we're gonna make a, a top, top Yondu. Yondu. Video. Yeah, dude. Let's make some top Yondu videos for all seven Yondus. Actually, might be kind of a, a lot. Maybe a little bit. Might have an REV version. Yeah. Uh, he ignores yeah. elevated terrain for targeting. He has seven range, above average range. He's running shot, eleven attack, three damage. Uh, with ESD, um, running shot and prob. So very meh for 50 points. This is another one where it's like, man, take at least 10 points off this dude's dial. Like, this is a 40-point figure, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Guardian's team ability, very bland, very boring. Uh, he does have rally. This is for all attack rolls. It is a three. Three, remove one of Ra Yandu's rally dice. If you do, this turn, Yandu has three bolts and deals penetrating damage. Now, that changes things a lot, right? Yeah. So I would never want to attack without his rally because it sucks. But yeah, once we great. do add his rally, then he's a triple target, 11 for 3, penetrating, you know, which only makes him two stats worse than Kate Bishop for the same points. But also for the same for the points, same. he has to do, yes, exactly, he's only two stats worse, um, attack worse, range worse, and then he also needs all this setup, and then he's the same points as Kate Bishop, but he does have prob, he has prob, um, and he also has no sidestep. I so mean, when we look at him compared... Elevated. That's it cool. Is pretty cool, though. Cool. But again, remember, situational. Mm. We don't know what maps we're going on. Not that it's not good. It's awesome. It's absolutely great. Um, but yeah, I think this guy's kind of a... Use him as a prob piece. Try not to let him get hit until he can get some rally dies, though. And since it is all attack rolls, you know, do a... Like, if you do a turn with a bunch of attacks... Do that and then see how many just threes you can get because then he's really really good the rest of his dial he goes on to some sidestep out wit down dial won't well, let's not let's pretend for a moment he won't instantly get knocked past all of that and die right, right away um then that's pretty co cool you know um yeah but yeah he, he's pretty rough but his rally really helps him makes up for it a lot it's just if that rally triggers if it doesn't trigger it's really rough if it does though he he is solid he's a mini kate bishop yeah who should be 10 points I mean, less. for 50 points, a 7-range prob is probably worth it and sealed. But, yeah, yeah, if you don't get any 3s, if somehow, like, you don't see a single 3, um, he's half the attacker he could be, essentially. Um, next up is the Valkyrie that we were just mentioning with uh, the Dr. Annabelle Riggs. So, she has a single trait that is free. If Valkyrie began your turn on the map, replace her with the Dr. Annabelle Riggs on the same click number so you can go back and forth. Um, Bat Jester says, Annabelle cannot pick up power. Uh, I don't know what that is. So it's a kind of a cool gimmick. I'm reading these comments uh, now. It's it's So this Goop guy, Goop, um, if you're on H Realms, Goop comments on every single figure in a set. And... He th he misunderstood that Annabelle Riggs's thing oh, lets her a pick power. a power oh. instead of lets her outwit a power. She yeah she can so, I mean, she can technically pick a power to outwit, but right. yeah she's not uh, industrial pick spy. Pick a power she figure. Get that power. Um, he's like with all, but he's like but Annabelle with all that pick a power stuff is way better. <laughs> and then old Bat just here is like Annabelle cannot pick a power, um, which he is correct. Period. And Goop Goop is on that Goop because he's an idiot. <laughs> Uh, so this Valkyrie is obviously, um, either you didn't pull great if you're playing her, she's got Asgardian, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Warrior, or you also pulled that Dr. Annabelle Riggs. Between the two for 50 points, I think, it depends on what I pulled, but I think I'd go with Dr. Annabelle Riggs. Um, if I can switch, uh, this is yeah. great, but, um, this is just like such a standard four square charge 
uh, with an 11 attack for 3 damage. Super standard close attacker. Not a bad close attacker by any means for 50 points and sealed. Uh, in Constructed, obviously, you're not going to start with this figure on the map. You're probably going to start with the Dr. Annabelle Riggs. Maybe if you can like switch it into... I don't know, like close the gap with Dr. Annabelle Riggs, switch into this one so you've got combat reflexes. Uh, neither of them are very defense heavy. Um, neither of them deal like a ton of damage. The down dial flurry blades is definitely like where I'd want to end with this. So I can, you know, actually go for that like Hail Mary kind of damage output. Uh, but yeah, it's this figure should only exist in the, the, um, same booster as Dr. Annabelle Riggs because if I pull this by itself I'm kind of disappointed this isn't something I can really build with super well um, I just have to have like a gap in my team if I'm putting this on there essentially yeah absolutely now talking about Shang-Chi Shang-Chi here Shang -Chi. dude love this guy this dude's a banger man uh, once again uh, we have another Avengers keyworded figure. He also has team player. He's also 50 points. Man, that 50 point line is being used and abused solid, in this set. Solid, solid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so many 50 point lines. But I love this guy. I, I really want, like, honestly, you want to talk about a sealed pick that I think is just really cool, really fun that I want to mm -hmm. try out? It's this Shang-Chi. Uh, triple target, zero range, charge first three clicks, exploit super senses first three clicks, and then he has an entire special attack power, his entire dial. Last three clicks, he goes on to sidestep with close combat expert with combat reflexes. Very cool, very nice. Uh, very nice, very evil. Uh, he has one trait, which is the deadly hands of Kung Fu. He's just traded flurry. So my man, top dial, 11 for 3, flurry, exploit weakness. Awesome. Down dial, 11 for 3, flurry, nothing. Or potentially a 10 for 4 on his last click with a flurry. Love it. Absolutely love it. When he gets to triple target people, amazing. Chef's kiss. Deal a bunch of people, um, you know, one penetrating damage each three people, and then do that twice, so two penetrating damage to everybody. He can deal out six damage in a turn no matter what, whether he does it all to one person, all to whatever person. Maybe two damage here, one damage there, whatever. He's dealing six pen damage right away. Um, and that's on his set, if he does both attacks that way, right? Or, now this I kind of like, pressure points. Incapacitate, okay, this is his special attack power. Unique modifier. When Shang-Chi uses it until your next turn, hit characters are given an action token and modify damage negative one. So triple target, incapacitate, and then you can also modify their damage negative one, and then you can flurry and deal them all one penetrating damage, or deal someone, nuke them for three damage. There's some things going on in the comments. Goop is on that goop again, where he's <laughs> like, why would you ever want to use incap? But dude, you can run up to an entire group of people Incap all of them, modify their damage minus one, and maybe just incap them again, and you only have one token for doing that, and now they all have two tokens, which means next turn, you can just, you could incap them again, or, you know, pen them all again for damage. That's freaking awesome. The incap power, just like if you actually understand martial arts and aren't on that goop like some people are, um, it's pretty huge to get advantage on when you get the flow of battle, the attacks, when you can make it. This Shang-Chi is awesome. He's Avengers. Hopefully you pull Black Widow. Hopefully yeah. you get some stealth. Um, stuff like that. Really, really good. Maybe even pull Hulk, give him some toughness, add some life to him. But wow, this Shang-Chi is cool. I like it. I this yeah, it's, might be, you know, it might be top uh, four Shang-Chi's for sure. He's not, definitely in my top it, four Shang Chi's. It could be. Uh could be in the top four. Um <laughs> But no, there's not a lot of uh close um, pen damage in this set and this guy coming out of the gate with just like the ability to absolutely nuke some characters is really solid and yeah decent stats um, you know it's not like the 12 that um, Hawkeye has but it's it's decent enough uh, next up is probably one of the mm, I'm not gonna say worst pulls you can get but it's pretty. It's a pretty rough pull compared to some of the stuff that you can get. So this is Kid Loki number zero two eight. Uh, for fifty points, you've got mind control as the speed power. You've got two clicks of that. You have two clicks of a ten attack with telekinesis. Two clicks of eighteen with super senses. Two clicks of leadership with two damage. So not great. One trait is power. If Kid Loki is adjacent to a friendly War of the Realms 053A, the Destroyer, give that Destroyer a move action as a free, and then after resolutions, the Destroyer may make an attack. 
really cool if you happen to pull that destroyer and this Loki. I have not seen that happen yet, but if you manage to do that, that's really solid. Like you'll probably win most of your games because that's just a super solid pull. Um, it's a little bit of like throwback to like Justin Seifert kind of stuff. Oh, Bat Freak actually says, yeah, Justin Seifert light. Um, yeah. The fact that you have to have that very specific super rare figure for this figure to really be worth his points sucks. And then his down dial is the only part of him. So like, honestly, every time I saw this, on the, like the map if i saw it on the map i just ignored it because at best it's going to like try and move to six range mind control me uh at worst it's going to try and do like two damage um and then if i hit it it actually gets blades and prob which is way worse for me so i just didn't ever hit him until i could sink like two attacks back to back uh this will be a fun figure in constructed if you have again that 053a the non-prime destroyer super rare um, but otherwise I don't think anyone's ever going to use this figure. There's no flavor outside of the, yeah. the little destroyer team up thing, uh, as guardian deity guardians of the galaxy, mystical guardians team ability, no mystical team ability. Uh, it's, if you're really struggling for 50 points, like you need a TK or you need that leadership and you don't care about theme or you somehow made a guardians or as guardian theme, uh, he'd be okay and sealed. Um, yeah outside if of it need like, that, if you need that tk yeah yeah outside of it he's only as good as that destroyer is so you know take that into account but yeah not the best probably one of my least favorite uncommons to be honest just because he really only works with a super rare yeah next up we have angela with a dial so boring you think it wasn't angela but some generic <laughs> chick instead um I mean, Angela's like, she's cool, she looks cool, she's neat, she's cool in comics. This dial is just so boring. It's charge, full dial of blades, some sidestep later, invulnerability, top dial, combat reflexes, late dial, full dial, exploit. She's just a charge, exploit, blades figure. 50 points, though, I can't argue with that. You do get some value for this dial. Compared to a lot of 50-point dials we looked at, I'd say compared to the generic, or sorry, not generic, but just Valkyrie, Brunhilde Valkyrie, She's better than that. I mean, as Guardian, Assassin, Deity, Warrior, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Guardians team ability. This is your as Guardians of the Galaxy. Angela. Ah, she's just really boring. But you know yeah. what? Charge Blades, Exploit, Flight, 10 speed. I mean, it's 50 points. Once again, if your whole team, if you play 300 sealed and your whole team is not six 50 point figures, then honestly, it's not. It might not be that good of a team. Honestly, for all the 50 point figures you've been talking about. A bit nuts, um, but she's between like between the two. I prefer Shang Chi. Like I would, points, I would absolutely yeah. prefer Shang Chi. I mean, he's got flurry. Just think about it. he's just yeah. better, you know, just better. So Angela is uh, she's a big B. She gets a B uh, for boring. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, not much to say on that. Um, last uncommon is Donald Blake, and this is like the real. I don't like we didn't really have other than that Thor. We didn't really have any big beat stick uncommons. This guy is, he's really solid. He's got triple lightning bolt, zero damage. He comes in at 90 points. He's the first cosmic energy piece we've seen in this set. Oh, uh, man. All the way to 30 with no cosmic energy. So he's got that permanent willpower roll. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about outwit. He does rely on impervious, which means Hawkeye can make mincemeat of him, kind of. And, like, uh, well, Shang-Chi even more so. Um, yeah. He does have one super solid thing going for him. Whether he uses his triple target or his quake, he has no more Thors traded. When Donald Blake makes a close attack, his targets can't use defense powers. That means no super senses granted by uh, Spider-Man for Avengers, no impervious, you know, for like Nova, none of that stuff. Uh, and that's just when he makes a close attack. His targets can't. So it's when he targets, like his targets can't use defense powers. It's not hit characters can't use defense powers. So you don't get any of the stuff that would be in a defense slot. It's pretty solid. Um, down dial, he does have, you know, the all red flurry blades, super senses. I don't like the super senses as much as impervious, but I really like the flurry blades with this power because he's always dealing damage. Uh, he's... A solid pick. He's hard to build with because he's kind of, you know, he wants to get into the fray. But like I said, um, 
Shang-Chi can like make mincemeat of him in like one turn. Uh, Hawkeye can blast him from eight squares away. Uh, he yeah. can't really close the gap super close, like really super fast. And then he only has three printed damage top dial. Uh, now you could get, you know, a light object. You could uh, do empower some stuff like that to boost his damage. Um, but yeah, as guardian cosmic mystical, He's a, so, a solid 90 points if you're already breaking theme, if you're not going with, like, the Avengers build or whatever. Um, but, yeah, he's just, you know, one-trick pony. His trick just happens to be pretty solid. And I, I don't expect yeah. him to see play outside of Sealed, to be I, honest. Like, maybe yeah. casually, but... I don't like the same thing goes for if you play him in sealed or if you play him casually is you have to think how am I going to protect him before he gets up there because yeah. the dude's the dude's got a four square reach you know how do I get him in the fray right away or how do I protect him before he gets there he's got to make that first hit so his impervious can go a lot farther than it can so yeah I still like him I, I still yeah. think too many people might just think he's tier one sealed and I don't I don't think so. It's like it's like tier two, tier three, maybe. Like he's not like an auto pick play sealed. The problem is you have to think about how you get him there, how you can protect him to get him there. Because ninety points is a big investment. Yeah, for, for almost ninety points, you can get um, Hawkeye and Shang Chi, and you've got right. twice as much damage output with those Way two better. than you do with him. Um, now, his willpower, if his willpower roll hits every turn sure he's pretty solid but i mean yeah what are the yeah. chances all right um next up we got four going into the rares ladies and gentlemen um so we just passed really the the best two places in the set to get stuff from yeah the, the commons and uncommons which it's is good of, for a sealed it's gonna set. go downhill a little bit uh yeah a little a lot of bit with this store uh 75 points it's a shifting focus store um uh lame he's lame what can we say if that dial was yeah. reversed, we had some bizarro going on, but click four was click one. It's a different story, but he is a 10 attack, three damage, energy explosion, six range, one bolt, eight speed running shot, 18 defense, bleh, toughness top dial. Um, he's going to get dogged on by anyone right away. <laughs> uh, yeah. and if he gets pen blasted past. On the upside, he has good down dial clicks. On the downside... Right. His only good clicks are down dial. So he needs to take three damage or two damage or whatever to maybe get to an 11 for four, 12 for four, or 12 for four, right? That's some good stuff. He's got that sweet middle spot of his dial. Um, but if he gets punked and he can get punked right away or based right away or whatever, is he's an investment. He's a later in the game, he's real good. But if people I just, ignore him. Unlike Wonder Woman 80, like spot. shifting focus, I do not see. The, like the strong appeal to play the shifting focus Thor I don't for 75 either, yeah. points. It's just like, you know, obviously wonder woman 80th was better set. I mean, in most ways, um, yeah. I feel like that's just, everywhere. yeah. Like uh, the commons the, or generics, the, um, equipment, like all that kind of stuff. But like the shifting focus just seems so weak. Like I have a charge piece with, okay stats pretty decent stats i have a running shot piece which like makes sense you're gonna like you know do those two but like there's nothing of flavor outside of like oh you've got my my running shot option my charge option and uh we'll see later the the sidestep almost interesting option the finally has like a there's a final shifting focus piece for the puzzle that actually has a special power uh but yeah this thor is it's rough if this, you're paying 75 points for this. If this is your rare, I did pull this rare. I did not even consider playing it. I was like, 75 yeah. points for a running shot, 10 for three. Yeah. When there's Hawkeyes that are 50 for with a 12 for three psychic blast and have sidestep with their running shot yeah. and outrange him by two for 25 points less. Uh, all right. Uh, moving on to Moon Knight for 70 points. This is actually a fairly interesting character. Um, 70 points, 5 range, triple lightning bolts, team player, team ability, so copy stuff. Uh, of course, got Avengers, got Defenders, Detective, Heroes for Hire, Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, and Mystical. Look at all those keywords. We have almost nothing in modern to build with. Um, wow. Improved movement elevated. Got a little Spider-Man kind of action going on. Uh, he's got... not doing this for you. It's doing it for him. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got uh, one trait. There isn't a hit he wouldn't rather take. Uh, pretty interesting trait. So when Moon Knight takes damage from an opposing character's attack, you give him a vengeance token. At the beginning of your turn, you may remove two vengeance, to vengeance tokens if you do modify Moon Knight's combat values plus one until your next turn. So uh, obviously he's going to be down dial after he takes a hit unless you've got like some support thing going on. But um, most of his dial, he's going to be like a 12 or 11 at least when he does this in, like when he cashes this in. And he's going to have at least four damage. Like anywhere on his dial when he uses a vengeance token, he'll have at least four damage. Um, and with that five range becoming like a six range, it's just really solid. Uh, everything about this guy is pretty cool. Um, He's got a special power starting on click two going the rest of his dial that is carving a path for Conchu. Uh, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Quake, Steel Energy. When one or more opposing characters take damage from Moon Knight's attack, give him a vengeance token. So another way for him to get vengeance tokens, which means if you get hit, you can... Well, you have to get hit twice, but if you get hit twice, you can cash them in and hit somebody and then get another one. It's a pretty decent like little self self-sufficient kind of figure uh combined with Curious. avengers or certain team abilities uh you know he could get shape change he could get super senses from wonder woman and from spider-man uh he's got a lot of like option kind of stuff like that um i think he's really fun and constructed i haven't seen him played in sealed but i would assume he's got some longevity just because of that oh, steel yeah. energy um special power uh yeah. just you know you just have to be careful without wit but for 70 points he's not the best 70 points but he's definitely solid uh he's a figure that can be sufficient on its own and you don't have to worry about anything like you don't have to like bring support in for him but that improved yeah. movement elevated can definitely like make sure he stays in the fight yeah. you know your opponent can't just punk him and run away yeah, the only bad thing about this figure is that it's called carving a path for Cone Shoe instead of random BS go. Uh, his running shot or charge isn't called, I know you're here, Dracula, you big nerd, where's my money? Um, so, like, that's a little disappointing. They, they lost a lot of flavor, a lot of classic Moon Knight panels. Right. Um, but that's Very okay. un, um, unedited Moon Knight panels. 100% unedited Moon Knight panels, yeah. yes. Uh, anyways, uh, speaking of knights, no, actually, I really do, I do like this Moon Knight a lot, though. I, if I pulled him, I would definitely play him. Like, I don't think he's a pull and play figure, but I think I would want to play him because he looks really fun to play. I think he looks really fun to play in casual for sure. He feels like Moon Knight, so I like yeah. it a lot. Speaking of knights, uh, Moon Knight being predominantly uh, a white knight, now we have Black Knight. Yeah. Uh, Black Knight here, old Dane Whitman. Oh, hey, that's the guy from the Eternals movie. Yeah, the uh, star of the Eternals movie, Dane star of Whitman. Eternals, Dane Whitman. All Definitely five minutes that were worth watching. John Snow. Uh, the only <laughs> good five minutes of that entire movie were the ones where they say, Hey, Dane! Hey, Dane! Uh, Avengers, Defenders. Hey, look, another Defender. Uh, oh, look, another Heroes for Hire. Whoa, Moon Knight's got friends yeah. on low places here. Uh, mystical scientist warrior. Uh, so Avengers warrior being his best keywords in sealed. Uh, seventy five points. Whoa, another five little five points more than Moon Knight. Still seven clicks. Can he hold up? Let's see. Uh, he does have a better reducer, so he's charged for the first three clicks. He's outwit top dial for two clicks. He has invulnerability top dial, pretty solid. Uh, then he goes on to flurry and close combat expert on his last three clicks, making him an eleven for four uh, for some of those, which is really awesome. He has a special attack power, his entire seven quick long dial, which is Photon Sword. Blades, Claws, Fangs. When Black Knight uses it, after resolutions, give the hit character an action token. In cap Blades. Uh, but he has to use Blades, so you're going to have to roll for that sweet, sweet Blades if you want to give them an action token. So you know what? I think that kind of helps where if you roll a bad number on Blades, you don't feel as bad, because at least they got an action token. Kind of neat. And then he's got a special defense power on his last five clicks of life which is Avalon, which is his little horse guy, his metal steed horse person, uh, which gives him toughness. So he's got at least invulnerability, top two clicks, toughness, the rest of his dial. And then free, choose one to last to your next turn, combat reflexes or ESD. So if he's up close and personal like he normally should be, uh, based on his powers for the dial, you can choose combat reflexes. If for some reason he's all out there by his lonesome and you're scared of getting shot, you can choose ESD. Options are never bad. I really like this guy. 
for 75 points. I think he's a strong pick and seal. I think he'll be fun and casual. Uh, old Dane Whitman here. Overall, very, very solid. I like him a lot. I like him yeah. a lot. I think he's fun. Uh, I, I did play this. I did pull and play this guy in the second uh, sealed that I did. Um, I will say not my best point spent on like my team obviously like you know uh there's hawkeye black widow there's like other stuff that was really solid but that flurry man i think i've like i don't know i wouldn't say underestimated but my new favorite power combo is definitely a combination of flurry and close combat expert because yeah with how hard it is to like boost damage now that instant uh boost is just really solid um but no, I, I will say that this guy having outwit top dial uh, combined with the right Avengers, having solid reducers. One of the biggest issues I have with his defense power is since it's a free choose one until your next turn, if your opponent's going to double tap him, he essentially has invuln and then toughness and you don't have like those boosted stats. So that is kind of rough. Like every time he got hit off yeah. of Invuln, my opponent would be like, What's that defense power? And I'd be like, It's essentially just toughness until my next turn when I get a pick. And they'd be like, Oh, so I should like hit you now. And I'd be like, Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess so. Please don't. <laughs> so we've got the Knights, and now we need the King. Good old King Ooh. Ulick, number 034. Uh, man, how disappointing is it that we don't have generics in the set uh but we at yep. least get to generate rock troll so king uluk standard close combat piece uh he's got some exploit longer than normal amount of impervious for 65 points ends the dial with sidestep at close combat expert that last click having a 13 for three is kind of cool um yeah. only cool and in- like interesting thing about king uluk is that trait Unstoppable army of trolls, leadership, mastermind. When King Ulik uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead generate a rock troll bystander. Which, man, if if you were playing this and your opponent's playing that like 45 point Black Panther and you finally succeed on leadership and then they're just like, I'll replace oh, that with my one. How devastating. That would suck. Absolutely devastating. Oh, no. Um, the rock troll is super bland, but I mean... It's got good stats. Charge, 7 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, 3 damage. That's all. It's just got charge. Um, It's got charge, yeah. You can mastermind to it. He's got traded mastermind. He's got no protected outwit, though. No protected anything. Uh, He's just 65 points of kind of, eh, what are you doing? Like, (laughs) as guardian, brute, monster, and ruler. So he's definitely got options. Um, Does he generate the best bystanders ever? No. Does he generate them in some easy kind of way, like a free action or power action? No. Um, is he a fun thematic little character? Yeah. But yeah, I might play it in sealed. Yeah. I'd have to pull some weird stuff with it to really make it worth it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, you look though as guardian, solid 65 point filler as guardian. Um, yeah. No, I don't think he's the worst, but he's uh, he's, uh, he's very boring. He's very Is boring. he the one that became Tannerous? In Bro, itself. I ain't got no idea who freaking Tannerous is, my guy. In Tannerous Fear turns itself. into Thor, doesn't he? So, in, in Fear itself, um, I think it's Ulick. Wears, like, this enchanted necklace or something to <sighs> appear like Thor, to take on, like, the appearance of Thor. Oh, and that's who Tannerous okay. is, with, like, this dumb Tannerous hammer is. and stuff. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know. That might be Ulu. Uh, I don't remember. That very well possibly could be. Uh, next up is Curse. Uh, Curse is very disappointing from a lot of different ways. Uh, anyways, not totally from a gameplay way, though, however. So 60 points as Guardian, Armor, Brute, Monster, Mystical Warrior, good keywords. Uh, charge, Sidestep, Giant Reach 2 is the top dial speed power, so it does give this character a 9 squ- square reach. Pretty cool. Charge, Sidestep, Giant Reach 2. Not bad at all. And then a special defense power, which is invulnerability. Curse takes a maximum of one damage from ranged attacks or attacks from equipped characters with protected outwit. So if you're getting shot at from range, you do have a lot of life. If you're getting attacked by equipped, which there aren't any in this set, so sealed is yeah. not the best for that, but still, um, it does also help there. Um, and then you do also have outwit top dial, which is very solid. Uh, then Last three clicks, you still have vulnerability, but then you have Flurry Close Combat Expert with Steel Energy, 
which is this is a very solid rounded dial. You know, this figure saves you from a Kate Bishop bomb or stuff like that right away. Um, invulnerability is also very solid. I wish that power straight up had protected out. Oh, no, it does have protected. Excuse the heck out of me. So it does yeah. have protected outwit. So it's very, very, very solid. Actually, I do really like it. So gameplay wise, I really like, I actually do really like this figure. Flurry, Steel Energy, uh, the Close Combat Expert, 11-3. Is... Yeah. Good. Not Good like, stuff. So even if they have Psychic Blast. Uh, yeah you know it's gonna go down and in one which that's is why solid. you know the giant reach is also good giant reach combos well with this so you can stay at range you don't want to be close you want to stay at range you want them to have to try to whatever so you could charge punch them giant reach maybe even sidestep away or outwit their running shot or their charge or out with their charge or something you know uh very solid figure only bad thing only bad thing and this is totally a flavor thing but the one story that curse appears in a bigger story in it's not really a big story it's a side story for war of the realms but curse is constantly saying stuff like please kill me or something like that where it's like curse is like curse is like kill me why don't you kill me now do it do it kill me kill me now is like basically what curse is doing the entire time and curse is fighting this angel lady and this angel lady also just kind of wants to die in battle doesn't want to like kill herself or whatever but she just wants to like die in battle because she's like someone she loves is like that so like they like I, think, I don't know if they kill each other or they do something weird. I don't know what it is, but it's like Curse just wants to die because Curse doesn't want to be alive anymore. I mean, that's what meaning wants to die means. So thank you, Calder. That's... Thank you for that incredible. Um, but whatever. Yeah. Curse is like being tortured. She she right. is tired of. Which is also when we find out that like, Curse is like a she, which is interesting. Um, but anyways, yeah. There's that that power isn't anywhere on the dial. Um, so that's like a bit of a bummer. I wish there actually wasn't steel energy thematically, but for as a figure, it's good. I yeah. think curse is very solid. 60 points, better rares and worse rares, but for 60 points as guardian keyword in sealed, very solid. I think in constructed can also be a, just a very solid, very fun piece. Um, yeah. Like doing yeah. like an as guardian baddies yeah. kind of build thing. That'd be good. It'd be solid. It is a very like Yu-Gi-Oh looking sculpt. Like oh yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh series two, every nineties early yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh looking, yeah, something like that, or like Power Rangers villain or something. Uh, yeah. Next up, kind of out of place, but you know, maybe not. Uh, Baron Zemo coming in at a hot seventy-five points. What does Baron Zemo bring? And this is helmet. Uh, so at least according to HC Realms, this is helmet. Actually, he uh, he wears a mask, not a uh, helmet. Interesting. Yeah. Thought yeah. it was a crown. Um, for that some too. reason, has the Masters of Evil team ability. That symbol, I just don't, I can't place it. But uh, I don't know where it's. Uh, I don't know what it could be. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. This is a very <laughs> Baron Zemo kind of dial. Masters of it Evil team or yeah. Masters of Evil team ability and keyword ruler soldier thunderbolts. Um, full dial of Mastermind, which of course, uh, first four clicks are charge blades. Uh, last three clicks are stealth TK, which is very interesting. Um, and then I guess the other point value would be 35, which just starts you at that stealth TK. So much more utility when paid 35 points than, uh, like landing on it for 75, um, has the recruiter team ability or recruiter trait. And it's, so again, it's a power action and this works with all masters of evil keywords. Um, so like Calder talked about with captain America, if one is KO'd, you can replace him with a sideline one of uh i think it's less points um and then the whole dial this baron zemo has your strategy is pathetic compared to mine leadership outwit super simple for 35 was it 35 yeah for 35 75 and 35 yeah yeah for 35 points you get a ton of utility um for 75 points you get a ton of utility and an okay attacker uh so you're essentially paying 40 points to get like almost the same thing without the TK, I guess. But the TK is, uh, with these keywords, it's very likely that you just pulled like one big beefy dude that Baron Zemo can TK around a little bit. Uh, for yeah. 75 points, it's more like you're trying to fill some stuff because Charge yeah. Blades is not, uh, it's an 11 for three. It's not amazing for 75 points, uh, but that Leadership Outwit and Mastermind are, they're okay. Yeah, I mean, there are, we've talked about it quite a few, though. There's a lot of Masters of Evil in this set, so, I mean, there is potential yeah. to pop off. That, that team ability trait. is solid. Like, it is good. It's really good. 
I've enjoyed Especially for how much there. close combat figures are in this set. Come on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, next up, we got a little froggy boy, a little watery dude. We got freaking Throg here, guys. Uh, for 35 points, it's hard for me to tell you to not put him on your team, honestly. So he has a special speed yeah. power, which is just sidestep and then free. He occupies water terrain. Place him in a square of water terrain within six squares in line of fire. So... It's really just sidestep unless you get very lucky on map pulls. So once again, if you're going sealed, bring a ton of different maps. Uh, but as Guardian, Warrior, Guardians of the Galaxy, all very good keywords for him to potentially uh, win map. But he's an 11 for 2 with close combat expert, which means he's a 12 for 3 top dial. He's 18 defense. He's tiny, which means he has plus 1 defense from range. And then if he's in water, he can't be targeted within 4 squares, which is also really, really good. Plus he's Guardians of the Galaxy. 35 points, just... Five clicks for 35 points. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. He's absolutely no, he's, awesome. Get him up there, get him based eventually, and then have him smack someone. He's Great. definitely uh, a solid option. I mean, he's if you pull him as your rare and sealed, it's uh, a little disappointing. Like, you'd kind of want... Depends what your commons and uncommons are. Depends what your yeah. commons and uncommons are. But, We've uh, already discussed yeah, that's where the money is. He's Yeah, he's a solid point investment. Like, point for point, he's pretty solid. Um the prime version uh slightly different so this really one quickly also... though, really quickly oh, yeah. really quickly yeah. uh goop does say he's nothing amazing but not bad at all and then i first of all disagree with that now i do not disagree this much with that higher ground says goop saying that it's nothing amazing about the most broken dial in the last 20 years <laughs> really makes me wonder what he looks at for 40 points the damage reduction the mobility just raw stats for him his cost is unmatched I don't know about the most broken dial that. in the last 20 years. I don't know about the most broken dial in the last 20 years. You're saying since the beginning of the game, this is the most broken dial? Yeah, for 40 points. And this points. is, talk, sorry, this is, seen a prime your, this is your figure, points by the way. Do this. So, this yeah. is your figure, so uh, now take it away. Sorry, I just had to. No, so that funny. is. <laughs> let's see how, what makes this so broken. So uh, this frog Thor, this prime one, um, this is actually Thor, so Thor Odinson, uh, has the trait Puddle Leap. At the beginning of the game, generate up to six water terrain markers anywhere on the map that aren't within three squares of each other. Free if Frog Thor occupies water terrain. Place him in a square of water terrain within six squares and line of fire. Like, so, previously, the the other Throg, um, the, other, the other Frog, uh, had to be on the right map this one does not have to be on the right map to make that kick off and then bottom half of the dial there's a for the last three clicks there's a special damage power that is what do you call a six foot six fighting mad bullfrog and it gives him close combat expert frog thor has standard damage symbol and protected pulse wave um so yeah this this figure starts off tiny sized and dolphin symbol uh with charge quake three damage uh, 17 defense with invuln for the first three clicks and then on the last three clicks he goes back to standard size gets um, an 11 for three with close combat expert that's 12 for four it's definitely a solid figure if like this is the rare yeah. you pulled obviously in sealed you're most likely not going to pull more than one prime if you pull one at all but if you pulled this this is definitely a solid point investment it's going to be hard for your opponent to not knock you to one of those close combat expert clicks i really wish since it's, it is thor odinson i really wish it did have avengers but it's got uh, um animal as guardian and mystical keywords it's an okay figure i mean it's it's better than okay it's a solid figure uh in constructed it probably works a little bit better but in sealed it's going to pull its weight because it's only 40 points uh it's obviously the most busted thing in the last 20 years um right clearly <laughs> No, it's it's very similar to Throg. Um, it just does all the same things slightly better for five points more. Yeah, yeah. Next up, we got old Mary Jane. I haven't seen the sculpt. What makes her so as Guardian? I mean, she's um, wearing like a Thor costume. What is she doing? Yes, What's Mary Jane I believe doing? so. Let me see if. What the Mary Jane doing? Yeah, no, I'm pretty like, sure she's got like she's a about. Valkyrie kind of style thing on, but yeah. I'm not positive. Okay. 
Anyways, she does have my kind of allies, so when establishing theme teams, characters with the Asgardian or Deity keyword also gain the Spider-Man keyword, Spider-Man family keyword. So she's a cheaper Spider-Viking, so if you didn't want to get Spider-Viking to make Asgardian Spider-Man family, uh, now you can just use this Mary Jane. She's also less points, which is really cool. Um, can be less points to Spider-Viking. So top dial, 60 points, running shot, energy explosion for three clicks. In vulnerability, top two clicks, and then special damage power for three clicks, which is really cool. And that is pinned by the hammer. When Mary Jane hits with a ranged combat attack, choose a hit target. Until your next turn, that character has a mobile and modifies attack and defense negative one. So very, very nice with a ranged combat attack. And now it is choose a hit target. Uh, it's not all hit targets. So she does have two bolts and she does have whatever, all that jazz going on. So just keep uh, keep that in mind with energy explosion. So you only get to choose one person. And then she has the trait call and help from the Spider-Verse, which is when she hits an opposing character. Now, this is only good if you have another friendly character, Spider-Man family keyword. Uh, if no character has been placed this turn, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. Three through six, place another friendly character with Spider-Man family keyword adjacent to, and by adjacent, adjacent to Mary Jane. So you can, like, bring over a Spider-Man character that maybe you overreach too far, or maybe that needs to be up in the battle and just teleport him right next to Mary Jane, which is really, can be really, really good. Um, later in the dial, she goes to charge Quake with some combat ref uh, sorry, with some toughness and close combat expert. So, you know, with Quake, she'll be an 11 for three. Uh, charging around, which is pretty cool. And, of course, she's Spider-Man TA. Uh, but she can also be 40 points, which I think is just the better choice for her, not wasting that 20 points. And you still yeah. get the pinned by the hammer. You still get an 11 for 3 running shot. You still have all that. Um, and it's just a better economy dial for 40 points, which lets her Spider-Man TA be used a bit more, like we said. Um, all of a sudden, that Captain America being the only shield figure in the entire set is starting to look really, <laughs> yeah. really good right now. Um, it actually, so like, yeah, it's depending like on what that. you pull, but yeah, I mean, depending obviously. on what you pull, um, it's um, pretty cool. But yeah, I, I think Mary Mary Jane's a very solid uh, tier two sealed pick. Put her on the team, cheap forty points, filling out as guardian keyword. You know, yeah. potentially even just make the a flight team team. is cool. pretty solid for forty. Uh, the flight running shot pretty solid for forty and constructed. Um, another character has been placed this turn after resolutions. You may roll a d six three through six. Place another. I mean, because the Spider-Man family keyword cheating like stuff still exists, maybe yeah. that works. Um, but then, I mean, you obviously have to attack and hit with this Mary Jane, which right. in Constructed is going to be a little bit harder than in Sealed. It, it is, yeah. Yeah, I can't bank on that. Uh, next up is Captain Marvel. So this is Carol Danvers. For 100 points, you only get 6 clicks of life, but they're pretty stout. You have uh, 11 speed running shot. She, of course, has flight, has the Avengers and Guardians team abilities. 6 range, 1 lightning bolt, which is a little sad. But um, 11 speed uh, running shot with 12 attack, psychic blast, 18 defense with invuln, 4 damage with prob. Uh, so probably not going to overreach or outreach most characters, but she will probably hit most characters in sealed a 12 for four with yeah. prob. Uh, it's going to be pretty solid. Um, the down dial, which is also the 50 point line, uh, is just charge quake and then close combat expert also with invuln. So she's a 12 for four on those clicks as well, even though, I mean, her last click, she's a 12 for five, but she's essentially got a 12 attack her whole dial, uh, whether it's close or range. And she only does the pen damage top dial, whether you can fit her in at the 100 or fit her in at the 50. Um, you know, it's up to you, depending on what you pull. But I think I like her at the 50 a little bit more, just because for 50 points, I've got that Hawkeye that's a 12 for 3 Psychic Blast, has better range, that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, the prob does count for something. And then uh, she does have the recruiter trait. So again, power action, anyone with the Cree keyword in your KO area can be chosen and uh, you can generate them. So maybe that sees some play. Uh, she has the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cree, and Soldier keywords. I just don't think there's a lot of Cree in modern that would be... I mean, Golden Age, there's definitely something I could think of, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not... um. Probably the worst recruiter 
I think we can probably agree it's like the worst recruiter. Yeah, uh, it's a bad so far. named keyword to be honest. It's like a bad it's just... named keyword. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a wasp here, a normal sized, an average sized Janet Van Dyne, mm -hmm. a perfectly standard sized wasp. <laughs> uh, flight two targets, uh, six range. Running shot, energy explosion, first three clicks with leadership. Also, this first three clicks, she's an 11 for three top dial. Entire dial of super senses. I like her back dial a little bit more. Uh, she's sidestep, pen blast with exploit. Pretty cool. She is an Avengers recruiter, so you know, all of that stuff. And then she is 60 points. Um, what is good that she does? Well, you know, I said she was standard size. Don't worry about that anymore. Free, choose one. Tiny symbol, standard damage symbol, or giant symbol. Wasp has the chosen symbol until you choose again protected pulse wave so she changes size very accurate for wasp uh she's very boring she's very lame if she had a 30 point line with sidestep pen blast exploit super senses i'd be like yeah sure toss her on there why not um a little, little double target pen blast piece could be good uh but 60 points for what she does nah fam I ain't yeah. about that life i wouldn't play her i wouldn't play her in anything yeah, because it's Very until boring. you choose again. Um, it does give her the the cool option of getting the giant willpower roll, the giant size uh, willpower roll. True, true, um, true, true. If it was like until your next turn, the timing would be weird on that. But um, I'm probably gonna stick her at tiny size for the majority of it, just to get that plus one from range. I can't imagine. Maybe if like I give her a second action token, I'm gonna free make her giant, so I have the chance of removing yeah. her next turn. Uh, but that makes her a huge target, literally. Um, yeah, just a. If you pull this, it's not the best thing, but it it is an Avenger. I mean, it is a range attacker. It is a little bit of defensive, kind of like high boosted stat kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, next up is Thunderstrike. For 75 points, we've seen a lot of 75-point figures. We've also seen a lot of 55-point figures. What does this one do? Well, some of the same stuff that the other ones did. Uh, what do I really love to have comboed with my charge top dial? Uh, my charge, six range, flight. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's psychic blast. I love being able to charge and... Oh, wait. No, no, I can't do that. Well, oh. maybe when I get my running shot... Oh, no. Oh. When I get running shot, I've got energy explosion instead. Uh... Yeah, if the speed powers were flipped, this character would be pretty interesting to me. Uh, the special power for the first four clicks is Penetrating Psychic Blast and Quake. So you can combo the Quake, but you've got four damage, 11 for four on the first click. Um, and then clicks two through four, you drop down to Toughness with 11s for three. Uh, you get sidestep on click three and four. Just kind of a wonky dial. He does have as guardian Guardians of the Galaxy and Warrior keyword with the Guardians team ability. The six range one lightning bolt means it's not like the best range attacker for seventy five points. I'm just like, give me something more because for seventy, my uncommon Nova just blows this guy out of the water. Like five points less, and it's one rarity less, and it just completely like nerfs this dude um i do like the the power combo i just wish the speed powers like made sense to me i'd like to yeah. have like a running shot with like a follow-up sidestep close attack kind of like something something like that something i don't know but yeah he's probably one of my least favorite rares he just like thematically doesn't do it for me oh and this of course yeah. kevin masterson not um not not eric yeah. not the good thunderstrike right or better thunderstrike uh, i like i like yeah, eric masterson yeah. i i actually do like eric masterson i thought he was a really awesome thor and a really cool thunderstrike and his kid is a disappointment um <laughs> both in dial and <laughs> and in comic in yeah. real life uh next up we got valkyrie i believe this is like movie-esque valkyrie am i right she's exiles so, so I think this is like movie valkyrie not it's movie real valkyrie. name unknown not real name Thorin, various, but yeah right i think you're right with uh it's the look of tara strong be, yeah. not tara strong whatever whatever her face is um yeah what's her face you yeah. know from ragnarok from Anyways. the movie <laughs> yeah from the movie uh Four clicks, top four clicks are looking pretty solid. She's got a special attack power. She's got charge. She's got invulnerability for top four clicks. Last three clicks, she's got plasticity, 
Steel energy, toughness, and exploit weakness. So let's talk about the 70 click long dial that has two bolts, Asgardian, Brute, Exiles, and Warrior. Great, Lone Defender of Asgard. This is where the money is, folks. This is where it's all about. Valkyrie can reduce damage, penetrating damage, dealt by non-adjacent characters. You're like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just punch her then. And then when Valkyrie is dealt damage by an adjacent character, reduce damage taken by one in addition to other effects. So some charge exploit will still get through all that. But if you try to punch her, uh, she's going to be reducing it by three if you have no exploit and or outwit. Even if you outwit her defense and punch her, she's still going to reduce it by at least one. Right. Really cool. Really brings in some tankiness for old Valkyrie here. Uh, I like it a lot. And then Dragon Fang and Gear. Gear? Gear? I'm going to say Gear. Uh, she has special attack powers, Blades, Claws, Fangs, but may use it if targeting up to two characters. And she rolls a separate D6 for each hit character. You know, I think maybe a roll a D6, don't like the result, roll another one would be better and potentially deal them both that right. damage. But rolling a separate D6 can be useful sometimes, can suck sometimes. You never really know. It's going to be um, like the character with the the big reducer, like the impervious, I'm going to roll like a 2. And then the character that's like the bystander that I also targeted, I'm going to roll a 6. That's how it, it's always going to go. Yeah. Sadly, sadly, it's kind of like that's like, uh, well, that's what I want to happen. No, Hero Click's reality is that this is what's going to happen. But that's Valk. the bellboy says, Ooh, we, I'll definitely be giving her the stones of Merlin to maximize her tankiness. That really won't. I mean, I, I guess that helps with the. Uh, damage dealt by an adjacent character reduce the damage by one. So if they're adjacent and dealing pen damage, it helps with that. But otherwise, the stones of Merlin don't really do that much for her. Uh, um, yeah, she needs some protected outwit mostly. I'd say more so in stones of Merlin. Yeah. Uh, next up is the non prime wrecker, number 043. Uh, 70 points, Masters of Evil, two lightning bolts, really solid dial. So two clicks of impervious. Uh, two clicks of charge, top dial. Two clicks of quake with an 11 attack. Three damage with close combat expert. So you're 12 for four top dial with two lightning bolts. I really like this like 70 point line. This is like a good solid rare. Um, next three clicks are flurry with, I mean quake's the whole dial, but flurry with 11s that go down to a 10 on click five. Uh, Invuln for the rest of the dial from click three on. And then clicks three through five have exploit weakness with flurry that's pretty solid it's not as i don't like it as much as close combat expert flurry but you know potentially six pen damage and then the last yeah. two clicks you end on sidestep uh 10 and nine attack 17 and 16 defense um and then two damage with close combat expert so he never goes below a 10 he's mostly 11s in the top two clicks he's going to be 12s um, he does have improved movement destroy blocking, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and then he's got a single trait, pound you into the pavement. When Wrecker hits with a close attack, after resolutions, you may generate a debris marker in a hit characters or hit targets square. Unique modifier opposing characters occupying or adjacent to one or more debris markers modify attack minus one. So that hopefully makes up for his kind of lackluster defense stats, but, um, yeah, for 70 points, this guy can be like a kamikaze, you know, just send him out to deal a bunch of close damage. Uh, he's definitely not going to last like the whole game, but um, he doesn't need to. He's a fairly small investment for how decent his stats are. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really decent record. He's obviously meant to be played with the like legacy card versions of the Wrecking Crew, which is mm -hmm. cool. So it is a bummer he doesn't have their WWE like trait and everything, you know. Yeah, would have been cool. Sucks, Especially because they didn't I like legacy him a lot. card him. Yeah, they didn't legacy that's card him, which is like so that's weird probably, that he didn't get that. It's like you know what? We're gonna make the wrecker. That's it. I don't want to make the rest of the wrecking crew. And it's like, but everybody's gonna be mad if you don't like to make the rest of the wrecking crew. And it's like, I don't know. Make them legacy cards or something, bro. Get off my back about it, okay? Yeah. And then that's what happened. And then they made the wrecker. Twice. What so now we're going to talk about the rare prime because then people wouldn't have uh, to get the legacy card of a super rare, of a super rare. Yeah, right. Instead, it's a rare lace card. But you know, the wrecker is like the leader of the of the team. That's so yeah. It makes, Fair I guess, enough. More sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up is prime wrecker. So five more points. What are we getting here? Something completely different. 
like just something completely different. So instead of charge top dial, he's got sidestep top dial. He has a five clicks of leadership. He has invulnerability top dial. So he's not really great a great attacker. His movement destroys blocking terrain, but he does a bunch of other stuff, which is cool. On click three, he goes to a 12 attack, four damage with charge. Very respectable and picking up some impervious. Uh, and then he's kind of a four damage. The rest of his dial after those for clicks yeah. and then on his last click and baby this last mm. click gets me a little hot under the collar he is a flurry 12 attack 4 damage a close combat expert which means he's a 12 for 5 flurry which means if for some reason you're rolling regeneration on that click when you're adjacent to a care opposing character you're doing something wrong and by that you I mean mentally be, wrong when you could be, be doing 10 damage, damage with a 13 a 13 attack mm. holy smokes uh, but he's got brute frightful 4 masters of evil and wrecking crew is he the best frightful 4 figure him and Super Scroll are pretty close, probably. Um, now, let's get into his cool stuff. Like I said, his last click is Stop Impervious Regeneration. Very respectable, very commendable. He has improvement, destroys blocking. But what's the flavorful thing he does? Well, he has a trait called Meet My Wrecking Crew. The bystanders on this card are, quote-unquote, the Wrecking Crew. Free, generate a Wrecking Crew bystander that hasn't already been generated this game. And then once per turn, per character, Whenever the Wrecker or a Wrecking Crew bystander destroys a wall or square of blocking terrain closer to an opponent's starting area uh, than your own starting area, you gain one mission point. Now, I assume um, if you destroy multiples in one turn, you can't gain a mission point for each one, or is that true? Once per turn per character. Whenever Wrecker or a Wrecking Crew bystander destroys a wall or a square of blocking like it's terrain. The, it's the per character thing where I'm like... Once per like, would that not be gain one mission point per character? So like, if you had all four of them do it, then you get. Oh, okay. Four. That's how That's I what, read okay. it. Because otherwise, they'd say once per turn for all characters. With this, with or whatever, not, or not with whatever, but right? yeah. Once yeah. per turn per character, you gain one. Okay, so cool. Now that that does make it a little bit easier than the whole me thinking it was crazy broken that one person could destroy nine squares and then get nine squares of blocking oh. terrain. That would be yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I was misunderstanding it, and that would be crazy. So yeah, now this is kind of cool. So number one, it's a free action to make these pogs. Number two, it's a really easy way to get this. So they have to be closer to the opponent's starting area. Not that hard. Don't worry about it. What do the pogs do? Uh, pogs are great. First up, bulldozer. He is a ten speed, ten attack, seventeen defense with impervious and three damage with, of course, improved movement, destroys blocking terrain. Big note: they all have massive Reveal team ability, yeah, which we've already huge. talked about. Is really good. That thirteen so uh, for five. Yeah. And now all of a sudden your opponent has like a minus three, minus two to defense yeah. when you hit him. Yeah. Uh, so Bulldozer's the only one with any kind of movement attack besides Thunderball, who has sidestep, quake, 18 defense, toughness, and then outwit. So uh, plus one to defense only has toughness on old Thunderball here, but he also has outwit, quake, and sidestep, which is a very good utility piece, which I like mm -hmm. a lot. Pile Driver is probably the worst, depending on where you're at. If you plop down Pile Driver for free right next to people, then he's the best choice but he's got flurry for his movement and he's got 18 defense uh for his deep uh, for his defense duh and invulnerability so he's a 10 for three just like bulldozer is a bit a bit interesting they made wrecker the brains of it all so he yeah. has less attack less defense i would but bulldozer and pile driver are solid uh but thunderball's just as strong i would have loved to have beefy. seen like bulldozer get like empower um, is it the that'd be is good? The Ultron really drones, good. do they have empower? Someone's got no, they don't. They just Maybe have it's sidestep. The Kotati warriors, they don't have it either. They suck. Something has it. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, no, if if one of them had empower, uh, and boosted the damage output on the rest of them, it'd be a little bit cooler. Um, but for free, like being able to generate them, they're not exactly easy to kill. They're not, you know, uh, they're definitely not the rock trolls. Uh, with the <laughs> no reducer, um, and so it can be like a follow up thing. He can wrecker can move in there and attack, and then drop one, or he can potentially you know yeah. just full speed drop one. I also just kind of um, like the the alpha strike esque ness of yeah. it, where he can like like you said full speed move up, or someone could carry him all the way up. He can mm -hmm. drop off pile driver. They have negative one defense because of wrecker's own masters of evil. Very cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. All right, our next character is the first unique and the last rare. So this is uh, 044 Thor. So uh, this one is not one of the shifting focus. So he comes in. Uh, oh, this is Jane Foster, I guess, not uh, Odinson. Uh, but 
comes in at 100 points, has flight, uh, special speed power for the first two clicks, 11 attack with no attack power, special uh, defense power for the first two clicks with 18s, and then two clicks of four damage with no damage power. Um, Avengers team ability, got Asgardians, Avengers, and DD keywords. Uh, so the trait is let Mjolnir fly. This is like very dark side esque. Free if Jane or if Thor hasn't been moved or placed this turn, and if no opposing character is adjacent, generate a Mjolnir marker, max one. Free, roll 2d6. For each d6 result, you choose the order, choose a horizontal or vertical direct path for Mjolnir marker. And then place the marker exactly that many squares away along that direct path. If either path first crosses a square of occupied by an opposing character, remove the marker, then make a close attack targeting that character regardless of adjacency, or a piece of blocking terrain, remove the marker and destroy that piece of blocking terrain. Um, so yeah, very dark side Omega Beam esque. Um, pretty solid top <laughs> dial where she's an 11 for 4. Uh, even solid like top or like uh, middle dial or bottom dial where she's um, an 11 for four or an 11 for three. Uh, her special speed power is the goddess of thunder charge. When Thor uses it, if her Mjolnir marker is not on the map, don't have speed. So she's a full speed unless you take that free action to generate the marker. Um, she's a full speed uh, 10 for, or well, just 10 with flight. Um, and that's pretty solid. Yeah, then her special defense up dial is impervious energy shield deflection, but only if the Mjolnir marker is not on the map. Um, and then she also gets that special defense power for from clicks five through seven, her weakest points being her th third and fourth click, where she's sidestep, quake, uh, 18 toughness for three damage without wit, and 17 toughness with... Uh, out, yeah, three damage outwit. Um, that's her weakest point in the dial, but a solid figure. I can't think of a reason why I'm going to generate the thing. Uh, it will be removed if it hits a character or blocking. So most of the time, she doesn't have to worry about it still being there. Heck, she could charge 10 squares, then generate it, uh, move it, yada yada kind of thing. Um, a pretty solid investment for 100 points. It's going to take some getting used to to play. But I would definitely play it in sealed if I pulled it. Uh, I would play it in constructed if I was building as Guardian or Avengers and wanted to try it out. It would definitely take some getting used to on the timing of dropping Mjolnir, rolling for it, trying to hit people with it, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's a cool fun. It's a cool and fun like piece, and it won't cost you the same amount that Dark Side did when he came out. Right, that is really cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, next up is going to be the man from Hell's Kitchen, the man without fear, uh, old Daredevil, Matt Murdock here. Uh, radar sense at a cosmic scale, adjacent friendly characters can use super senses. So, you know, worse than Spider-Man, who's an uncommon, which is a little funny for this super rare. He's six clicks long, he does have a 19 defense for his first two clicks. He has super senses and blades his entire dial, and then he has this special speed and special damage power his entire dial for 75 points as guardian deity martial artist marvel knights and mystical uh, open the bifrost his special speed power passenger two phase and teleport and sidestep passenger four but only to carry characters with the as guardian keyword so really big as guardian taxi by the way he's got cosmic energy which is nice so protected outwit on everything plus a willpower roll very cool um interesting i mean like he has a very supporting character in the story he doesn't really fight or do much uh he has blades because he has a big old sword but it is heimdall's sword he really is just doing bifrost stuff for and i don't know why i don't know why they're like hey heimdall you're still here you're still alive just let daredevil do the bifrost thing for a while and i, I really his, don't get it his hearing's so good he should really he can I hear the so rooms. now he yeah. can uh, there's a cool moment in comics where it's like, and Daredevil saw, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like that is neat. Like Daredevil gets to see again, uh, but again, like no real reason for it to happen besides that comic book writers thought it would look cool, which it did. Um, and then he has Heimdall's sight for his special damage power, his entire dial, which is probability control, 
but may target a character within eight squares regardless of uh line of fire which is really cool so it's like a bad mr oz yeah 75 Much points it's, mr. Oz. it's a lot yeah so in this set i think a solid sealed pick he's like a tier two probably not an auto play and pull but i mean 19 defense top dial super senses gives adjacent people super senses passenger two is really nice but he's just a blades dude at the end of the day he's just an 11 for three with blades and prob like it's not crazy it's nothing nuts you know i'd be a little worried about this guy dying six clicks just yeah got super senses like it's a little rough you know doesn't even have uh, Avengers just as Guardian, yeah. Just, yeah, no Avengers is really rough for him, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, going back one figure, because Calder really didn't want to talk about any of the shifting focus. Wanted me to have to read all of them. Um, <laughs> number 045. Oh, dude, oh my gosh, I totally... Yeah, yeah. I, there were two, there were two completely Thors. completely <laughs> forced me to do all the there shifting were, focus. There were two Thors back-to-back. -back. Uh, I wasn't paying yeah. attention. That's on me. I'm well, they sorry. do similar kind of things. So uh, this is the only flavorful shifting focus Thor. And man, does it not make up for like the other two. Because the other two, uh, remember, there's like the running shot, 10 attack, energy explosion. And then there's the charge, I think, quake piece that has better stats, but like it's charged. So it's not as great. Um, this one, again, flight, Avengers, as guardian, deity, warrior, uh, sidestep, top dial, instead of the other movement attacks. Um, of course, shifting focus. It's got invuln, so not the best defenses. Um, bottom dial is pretty solid with attack and damage values, but so top dial we've get, we've got ten for three again. Special attack power, the whole dial seven di seven clicks long. Um, clicks three and four, you go up to an eleven attack with three damage. Clicks five through seven, you get a twelve for four with charge. Uh, does that? combo with the special attack no uh the sidestep does kind of because sidestep combos with anything but uh the special attack power is hammer throw power improved targeting destroy blocking and improved targeting characters make a close attack regardless of adjacency targeting all opposing characters within six squares along a single direct line each hit character is dealt thor's printed damage value instead of normal damage after resolutions, destroy any walls or square of blocking terrain along the direct line of fire. Uh, so it's, you know, it's his hammer throw. Um, it's kind of like Ram, except he's not moving. You just draw a line of fire. It's close attack, dealing his printed damage value, which would be stupid good if it was four top dial, but it's not. And of course, you know, you have to get hit down dial to get that. Um, and then it's way harder to position and his last three clicks because he doesn't have sidestep. So if you actually want to hit more than one character, you're going to need sidestep. You're going to need like TK. Um, these Thors are just some like some of the most average, basic, kind of just boring, shifting focus characters we've had. And it's really sad, especially with this one yeah. being a super rare. And this is the best. It, I mean, this is the best one somehow. Like, man, that's rough. It's rough having a super rare. This is the one of the super rares that I pulled. I pulled uh, two rares. Ooh, bad one, pull, man. And then I pulled bad this, and I was looking at pull. it, and I was like, oh, I could kind of, and I was like, no. I'm going to play three commons, an uncommon, and uh, what was my rare that I, oh, I, I played uh, the rare um, Black Knight, who <laughs> was probably not even my best character, but yeah, I played all of that instead of this guy, because... Yeah, man, he's bad. like banking on your opponent hitting you to click five, six, or seven. It's not great, and then it's not like he's got stupid good defenses there. He's still just got impervious with an eighteen. I mean, it's much better than his seventeen invuln, but it's not. It's not anything special by any means. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up in this roundabout order that I made us go in, my bad again. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Gamora. So, 80 points, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, team ability, cool. Six range, one bolt, Assassin, Cosmic, Guardians of the Galaxy, Infinity Watch, and Warrior. Roll tag ally. Roll Man. tag ally in this set where we with, have yet to no have captains, a captain or a sidekick. Side yeah. But cool. Thank you. Very cool. Um, cool. Improved targeting in order elevated characters and adjacent shoot while based. Very good for this figure that is not ranged based at all, I guess. Thanks. Thanks for that. Gamora, 
you charge Blades figure your entire dial with close combat expert and exploit weakness. Uh, three clicks of toughness, top dial. Then three clicks of impervious. Strange, I guess, but okay. Um, why is she an ally? Here's why. Sideline active, unique modifier. Friendly captains and sidekicks modify attack plus one when attacking one or more equipped characters. Now, she is like the best ally. That's pretty dang that's, yeah. good. Um, that's really good. Competitively, that though. is just really yeah. good. Um, and now to go with her only top dial 17 toughness, she has another trait, which is super senses. Once per turn when Gamora hits the close comp with a close attack, after resolution, she may make a ranged attack. So this is where her improved targeting comes in, which is the only time it's actually good. Yeah. Uh, and that is when she hits with a close attack, so a 12 for 4 top dial close attack, she then gets to make an 11 for 3 range attack. Solid. I mean, solid. Like, I am I underwhelmed by a lot of it? Yes, but she does make two attacks in a turn. She is fairly solid. Um, she has move and attack. She is six clicks of long. 80 points is a, is a bit much for what she does. Yeah. And also, she's a thousand times worse than this next Gamora we're going to talk about. Yeah, um, she's... I, I think she'd be way more impressive had it not been for this Prime just really blowing it out of the water. So, yeah. uh, we get a return to Battleworld. Um, the Prime Super Rare Gamora... Uh, comes in at 125 points or 60 points. Both are pretty solid. Um, in sealed, I'd lean towards the 125, but if you pull some really solid stuff, the 60 is also fine. So she's got Asgardian, Battleworld Asgard, Battleworld Other, Guardians of the Galaxy, Police, and Warrior keywords. Has the PD team ability and the Guardians team ability. Um, so yeah, she. This is a battle world, uh, a Thor in battle world. This Gamora, the deadliest Thor in battle world, is her first trait. When Gamora targets more than one character with an attack, instead of dividing damage, she may deal her printed damage value to each hit target. Um, she has triple target with her twelve speed charge top dial, twelve attack, four damage with close combat expert. So if she does this and splits the damage, she's dealing. Uh, what would that be? 12 damage to uh, split between three characters because four to each. That's a lot. That's a lot for one character. Um, she's got crack the case wide open. Once per turn, when an opposing character within four squares makes an attack, give Gamora an evidence token, free, remove two evidence tokens. And this is much better than crack the case from Battleworld because this is crack the case wide open. Free, remove two evidence tokens. Instead of just making a close attack, it's... Uh, place Gamora adjacent to an opposing character within four squares and then make an attack. That's really solid. Uh, it is it is just a free attack if you're already based. Otherwise, it's, you know, a zap over, like, retaliation kind of thing within four squares thing. Um, she has a special attack power for her first four clicks and a special defense power for her first four, four clicks. So her attack power is lightning channeled through the God Slayer, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, when Gamora targets a single cool. character with an attack, they can't use defense powers. So if you're not splitting your damage three ways or multiple ways, you can just deal them. Uh, well, you can deal damage and they can't use defense powers. So uh, on her top dial, she's a 13 for five, which is pretty solid with that close combat expert. That's pretty solid for like a single person hit. And then her defense is maintain battle world's borders with an assassin's touch, combat reflexes, and impervious. So she's definitely more close combat oriented, which in this set kind of hurts because that impervious and combat reflexes don't protect her from Hawkeye, from Nova, from a lot yeah. of a lot of the range options. But if you can keep her protected, um, if you can close the gap and you know, deal four damage to like a group of people or something like that. It's pretty solid. Uh, her bottom dial for 60 points, she gets, uh, it's click, it starts on click four. Um, yeah. So instead of combat reflex or close combat expert, she still has that attack power and that defense power. Uh, she has a 10 speed charge, an 11 attack, three damage with exploit, which exploit seems unnecessary, but it is pen damage to, uh, potentially three, three people. people yeah um and it's so it'd be like nine pen damage split three ways um not split at all i guess uh then she moves on to flurry blades uh toughness and exploit still which not a bad like bottom dial obviously losing the impervious and combat reflexes hurts a lot 
Her final click is 9 speed flurry, 11 attack with a 4 damage combat or close combat expert. So she's a 12 for 5 and an 18 toughness. Um, just an overall really solid figure. In sealed, it's an instant play. Uh, it's really hard to not play this. Like You're probably not going to pull much better and she just absolutely like nukes certain figures in this set like well any figure in the set really um but there's certain characters that are like harder to hit like um in a little while we'll talk about the uh destroyer armor and having a 13 for five and target can't use defense powers is really good against something like that uh but yeah that's gamora she's she's really solid um competitively Maybe at the sixty point line, I just she's too offensive. One twenty five is think, a lot of points. Yeah, a lot. I think she's too offensive to be like an actual because it's like something where you really have to close the gap. You actually have to engage, and so much of the competitive scene is not about any of that. So yeah. I doubt she'll actually make an impact. But she is a very actually, fun thematic <laughs> figure. Actually, engage with my opponent and not barrier for twenty turns. Uh, clearly, you're not playing competitively. Yeah. Uh, anyways, give me force so, blast for five points and uh, barrier, so that I can just keep knocking you away. And barrier now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's hero clicks right there. Um, really quick before we move on from the Gamora's Ultimate 2099 says, "I often wish WizKids was more transparent in their process." Number one, that doesn't have anything to do with the rest of your comments. So okay, uh, but he says, "Why make two additional Gamoras but still not give us a modern Drax or Star Lord?" Hey, I'm with you there, man. If Empire, Empire gave us Requiem, who's Gamora, and then a Prime, Gamora, and now in this set we yeah. have Gamora, and then a Prime, Gamora. So we have four Gamoras in modern right now, um, with two Rocket two Raccoons, primes, yeah. one Groot, yeah, two Prime Gamoras for how whatever that's necessary for, um, and not a single Star Lord or Drax. It's very sad. Very I'd really sad. like to see a, a new Drax and a Drax that like is a solid heavy hitter kind of thing too. Yeah. Not like a big dopey idiot. Not like how he's a big dopey idiot Dave Batista Drax, but like how he's just overcosted and not that good of an attacker like Drax that he was in like Avengers Infinity. Um next up we got Hella, 125 points, the most broken figure in the game until she gets an errata. Uh which I do hope she gets an errata. Um but Anyways, 125 points, 8 range. So, running shot, pen blast with exploit weakness, top dial. First three clicks, running shot, pen blast, impervious, exploit weakness. Next three clicks, she got charge blades with 12 attack, 17 defense, invulnerability with exploit weakness. Then last three clicks on her 8 click long dial. She has, uh, what's it called? Regeneration. Last two clicks, it's sidestep and then all black powers with outwit, regen, and steel energy. She's mystics. Not a ton of mystics in this set, so it's like her, Loki, and then Enchantress so far. Maybe another one in there I missed. Um, but anyways, she has a really cool mission point thing, which we've learned with Cannonball. Can just win the game in two turns. But anyways, <laughs> let's just look at it in a, in a sealed reference here. So uh, she has improved targeting characters. So cool. So I'll, I'll also, right away sealed, she matches Kate Bishop for shooting power. No no triple you know, target or whatever, but still uh, 10 speed, 11 attack, you know. No, no sidestep either, but still really good, really good. But still technically not as good as a 50 point figure. Anyways, uh, traits gathering the dead. Whenever a standard character is KO'd, generate a grave marker in the square they occupied. Power generate a Dragar, Draugr, Draugr, Draugr warrior bystander in all unoccupied squares, the grave marker within range. Then remove each of those grave markers and gain one mission point for each Draugr warrior uh, generated within this action. Uh, the whole thing with Cannonball, if you want to look it up, I'll just explain it really quickly here. You can have her Cannonball from uh, Deep Cuts or from Regenesis. Uh, Regenesis. So Regenesis. From Regenesis yeah. um, and then he can basically, when he moves through people, he can attack all of them and he can just deal them all yeah. or attack them or just deal them all damage. You can play that with Friends of Humanity and just nuke all he these little to, guys. Yeah, he has to make the attack, but Friends of Humanity are like all real low. It's 16 or yeah. something. Yeah. And then something real bad. Using tempo, you can give him like a plus three to speed. Um, yeah. I I think that in that build, like I would never make a contingent point on my team winning a game be a forty point piece that's got like a seventeen defense. Yeah. Um, because if Cannonball if Cannonball loses, or I don't know, like if if for some reason someone's playing uh, Injustice League competitively and 
they roll a six and no. just give him an action token. Let's not talk your about these scenarios stuff. that are just uh, impossible. I'm just saying, Let's like, not be crazy. There's, there's so many like situations where that forty point piece uh, ends up like losing you the game because yeah, it yeah. just didn't get. But there, besides that, there, there essentially is an issue when you have extremely cheap pieces like sub 20 sub like you know five point pieces friends of humanity um you can play uh new clones you can play a lot of stuff i mean you can just play a lot of stuff like in golden you could play this hella with um anarchy and just like have a like chip carry eight friends of humanity next to a bomb and then roll for the ball. Well, you'd have to wait until the next turn, but you get what I mean. Right. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Having a game where like yes. you punish your opponent for KOing your figures, or you just do it yourself and then just instantly win, isn't great, but it is exciting that finally mission points are at a point where we're seriously discussing if they can work. Um, for 125 points, they ought to because uh, how many points yeah. was Ares also? 150? 125, 125, 125, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, and then the Draugr Warriors. Um, so the, all that aside, if you generate those, uh, their charge exploit pieces with combat reflexes, not terrible. Um, they can actually deal damage. If they were uh, autonomous, they'd infinitely be better. But if you, yeah. you know, if you KO like half of your force in one turn power action, generate a bunch of these guys they're at least going to be body blockers for a turn which is true yeah um it is, it is neat enough but yeah hell is cool we didn't get to our other trait uh leadership mastermind when she's leadership you may instead generate a grave marker so there's like a very small chance you make a grave marker on that leadership as well the mastermind though basically means these dragar warriors if you're not using them to attack they're not the greatest attackers once again so means like said they, they can always do damage to somebody they're not the worst yeah. but they're at the very least mastermind fodder for hella hella's got great attack values the entire dial always an 11 or sometimes a 12 great damage always a three um i don't see her going out that easily between no. you know regen and mastermind fodder and everything plus she's got mystics she's a very solid use of points i think Hella's really awesome yeah also, I just I think any time I build with her, I'm gonna have a huge swarm of like stuff around her, so she'll just yeah. be physically hard to get to. Hopefully, right on. Um, next up is the zero four nine Valkyrie. So this is Jane Foster once again, not Thor version, but Valkyrie version. Uh, so for a hundred points, we already saw what the hundred point uh, Thor could do. This one, this Foster Jane Foster Valkyrie um, is slightly different. So. Uh, for 100 points, you get Mr. Horse. Your timing is impeccable. Uh, the Mr. Horse bystander, uh, slightly faster than Jane Foster. So, uh, or yeah, slightly faster than faster than Valkyrie. Uh, 12 speed with charge, flight, two damage with exploit, 10 attack, 17 defense. Not like the craziest um, bystander by any means, but uh, you generate it. Uh, for free so once per game you generate uh, Mr. Horse Bystander for free um, so you could like uh, well I'll get into it it's part of the speed power that's only on the 100 point dial uh, the speed power is charged when Valkyrie uses it don't have her speed unless she has generated a Mr. Horse Bystander this game and then once per game free generate a Mr. Horse Bystander that's the power uh, what this means is you could full speed charge you could like outwit full speed charge hit somebody 11 for 3 generate Mr. Horse either have Mr. Horse attack or you have Mr. Horse drag Jane Foster uh, Valkyrie back 12 squares like because the horse does have flight. So have the horse fly her 12 squares back, back to safety. Um, kind of a fun little yo-yo trick that will only really work once. Um, next up, uh, she has the trait und. Under yarn, under yarn, under yarn. Uh, the all weapon. <laughs> free. Choose a standard attack or standard power. Standard attack or standard damage power printed on Valkyrie's card. Valkyrie can use the chosen power until she chooses again. Uh, the attack powers are Quake, Blades, Steel Energy. The damage powers are Outwit, Prob, and Close Combat Expert. So top dial, you can have a twelve for four with uh, taking the Close Combat Expert. You can have Blades. You could have prob. I mean, obviously, you can combine it at any point. Um, 
And then, yeah, being able to steal energy at any point in the dial is pretty solid too. Uh, the last trait is Thor is a god, Valkyrie is a job. When a character damaged by Valkyrie, this turn would be KO'd but isn't. After resolutions, modify Valkyrie's combat values plus one this game. Um, yeah, that's so niche, it'll probably almost never kick off. But it is cool. I don't, I don't know. I don't even, like, that works with, what, Living Legend... It works with uh, the Krakoan Revival. It doesn't work with Recruiter because mm. Recruiter is KO'd. Uh, her other point line is the 60 point line. She doesn't get that special horsepower, Mr. Horse, uh, but she does still have the two traits. Uh, starts on uh, Prob and Blades, and then... Uh, it's just a standard attack or damage power printed on her card, so you can actually start on the 60-point line and still pick, like, Quake or Outwit, I guess. But, yeah, not a bad figure. Um, just as Guardian Deity, it'll be a fun figure, like a fun casual piece. I don't see it doing too much. In Sealed, I can see it being a pretty solid pull. Uh, I think there's better figures, for about the same points. Uh, the 60 point line definitely doesn't make me, other than prob, it doesn't make me like think twice too much. But being able to do like an 11 for four with prob is pretty solid. I don't know. It's definitely something to consider. It's just probably not going to be on theme with it. Yeah. Next up we have Dr. Uh, Doctor Strange. Um <laughs> 50 points, Flight, Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, Mystical, Mystics, Team Ability, Defenders, Team Ability, 18 Defense, not bad. Except someone else needs the Defenders, Team Ability to be able to use it, so it's not good either. Uh, anyways, proof targeting Henry Train. He is Recruiter, but for Mystical, so in this set, probably quite a bit. Um, this is the only cool thing about him in Constructed, is that he's got yeah. Recruiter with Mystical. He can make, like, Wendigos and stuff, bring yeah. them back, which is kind of <laughs> cool. Wendigo, yeah. You know, like, that is actually kind of neat. Uh, 50 points, though. Very boring dial. Phasing three, for three clicks. Energy Explosion, top three. ESD, top three. Prob, at the very least, top three. So if you pull him as your super rare, uh, after you get over your crippling depression, you will at least have a 50-point prob figure with Mystics. Last three clicks, we have Sidestep for three, Incapacitate, Super Senses, and Enhancement. Once again, people do be loving that late dial enhancement in this set for yeah. whatever reason. Uh, his second the trait is... rare. Rare, Very rare. Set. It's rare, man. How rare is enhancement in this deck? It's like how I like my stakes. Freaking rare, buddy. Uh, bleeding enhancement, rare here. Um, top dial enhancement. So, mentor in the Mystic Arts is his second trait. Free once per turn for all characters with this trait. So, you know, just him, unless you play multiples. Uh, choose a friendly character with the mystical keyword. This turn, when the chosen character attacks after resolution, steal the hit target one penetrating damage. That's actually really good. Uh, yeah. So just free, choose someone with Mystical. It could be this guy. Um, he gets to choose a hit target, uh, you know, and then it deal another penetrating damage. So pretty cool. Doesn't work with his energy explosion. I mean, he can only choose one of the hit targets. Um, but still, it's really cool. So it's neat. He's got eight range. Again, phasing that running shot is rough. It is a, you know, it's a Doctor Strange feeling dial. It's got weird powers that, like, Doctor Strange would use and all that jazz. It's just not the most cohesive dial in the world. It's a very common, uncommon, boring dial. And it's it's really rough to see as a super rare. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I assume I the sculpt is cool, but I don't know. That, uh, that mentor trait combined with Wendigo's where you can charge flurry oh, that's good um, that's real get good. a free attack for moving sidestep another free attack that's three attacks potentially three pen damage on top of whatever else you're doing with them uh yeah i could see st like combos like that being pretty solid um for 50 points it's kind of an investment for just that but i mean i've seen i've seen less for more uh next up is Crusader. This is good old Sarah Rogers. Uh, I believe Love it's it. Captain America's niece. Uh, Steve daughter, Rogers' actually. niece. Actually um, daughter. Yeah, daughter. his brother, uh, Jeremy yeah. Rogers. Yeah, all those siblings. Daughter, his daughter. Steve so. has. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So okay, this, is, this is what, Rogue and Cap? 
Is yeah, it's from a what if. Yeah. What if, yeah. Uh, also, another Battle World other figure. Um, Crusader yeah. here is super stout. So, 125 points, Avengers and X-Men team ability, which is, this is the only X-Men team ability, I think, in the whole set. Uh, but yeah. you can copy it, so there's that. As Guardian, Avengers, Battle Ooh. World, other, Soldier, X-Men. Yeah. Uh, keywords. Uh, for 125 points, you get 6 range, 2 lightning bolts. You've got 12 speed with charge for the first 3 clicks, 12 attack with quake for the first 2 clicks, 19 defense with impervious for the first 2 clicks, and then 4 damage with a special power for the first 5 clicks. It's really long. Uh, yeah. You know when you try and hit a character to get it off like the, the scary clicks? It's really yep. long ways to get it off the scary clicks. Um, yeah. Bottom half of the dial, click 6 through 10, uh, special speed power with Quake the whole dial. So it's mostly 11s, one click of 10 on the last click, um, mostly 18 defense, but two clicks of 17 on click 7 and 8, and it's invuln from click 7 to 10. And then you've got uh, Empower from click 6 to 10, uh, jumping back up to 4 damage on click 10. Um, what makes this figure so cool? For 125 points... You've got Mjolnir and Dad's Shield, which gives you free choose one until you choose again, close combat expert, or energy shield deflection. Uh, so that 19 becomes potentially a 21 top dial. Uh, all those 18s become 20s for like either close or range. Um, probably go on range and sealed because uh, there's a lot of psychic blast out there. Um, and then that special damage power top dial for the first five clicks is bring peace or die trying leadership and empower, which not a lot of damage boosting stuff in this set. So this figure being able to stick around for quite a while, um, it's got not only has a rollout could potentially pick up like the Spider-Man super senses or the Black Widow stealth. Uh, you also have leadership and empower to boost those characters that are uh, like tertiary attackers. And then the bottom dial, you have sidestep flurry for the last uh, five clicks. It's not yeah. the craziest damage output, but it's a really hard character to deal with. I know personally, I, I did, it was a hard time for me to like fight this character. Yeah, it's, it just sticks around for a really long time, and it's uh, kind of like surprising how tough it is to get damage to stick to it, especially if they've got like that Spider Man to give it a, yeah. an extra rollout um the someone middle, to copy x-men and heal her up yeah Heck yeah the, the middle yeah. dial uh the lower dial for 50 points less uh you get the 75 point line which uh starts on the what would that be the fifth click um yeah which it's is the first click before she goes to invulnerability right. and empower so and still has impervious uh still a 11 for four with 10 speed charge still a really solid figure leadership and power yeah uh, would definitely build with either point value. Like I think both are I really think so. solid. No, I like her a lot. I mean, top dial, she can be a 13 for five, which is absolutely insane. And then later dial, she's, you know, a 12 for four with flurry. Uh, absolutely love it. You know, once you get close and thick of it, the ESD keeps her safe from all those bombs we talked about, like eight bishop and everybody else that pen blast bomb you right away hmm. you know gives her just crazy high defense 21 from range before you actually have the chance to get all up in the thick of it and i think crusaders tier one instant bullet play it at either point value whatever works for your team composition at that time i i love crusader she's my favorite figure in the set just absolutely amazing uh next up talking about figures that are uh, great for, for just deep dials i guess we have the iron all father uh 300 points top dial or 125 that. points don't see that in sealed every day yeah no no you don't um i mean i guess in the last set we saw it uh but yeah anyways he also suffers from that thor uh the same reason he does have the farthest reach in this set with a nine range 12 attack so he's got a 15 square reach all on his lonesome um, which is pretty neat. And then he's a 13 attack, 5 damage, a penetrating psychic blast, and a 20 defense with impervious top dial with flight, cosmic energy, 300 points. All right. He's got a trait. More suns than I care to remember. Free, choose a character on your sideline with the Asgardian keyword and choose a standard attack or defense power printed on their card. 
Iron Allfather can use the chosen power until you choose again. So he instantly gets to take a defense power. So I don't know if characters are allowed to be on the sideline just for this reason. I assume so. Um, but there's something about the wording that makes me feel like you almost can't do it for whatever reason. But I assume you can put someone on the sideline just for this trait. I, yeah, I don't know. It just, I don't know. You know I, I'll have weird. to deep dive into that because it's, just, it's yeah. just worded odd to me. Like, I don't know. Like, anything sideline active, obviously, can be sidelined. Right. Um, but then, like, putting stuff on your team just for, like, a recruiter effect. You can't uh, do. You yeah. can't do that. Cause you've got to... Oh, no, yes, you can yeah, do that. Like you, you, yes, you can. You, yeah, you uh, can just add. Bad. But you have to be able to actually pull them in. I, I honestly do not know on that one because it's yeah. such, like, a niche thing that I don't even bother playing with. But I would imagine... Um, as long as there's like a reason for them to be on the sideline, you can yeah. usually do that. But um, so that is cool, you know. If there's like a Loki, you can potentially have like what's it called? Super senses the whole dial or something. Very nice. I mean, there's there's some choices you can make. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, and obviously it's any Asgardians. It doesn't have to be his actual sons. I was supposed to say, well, if you have Loki or Thor, but it's any Asgardians. So that's cool. Um, top dial. What else does he have? For his first five clicks of life, he has close combat expert, exploit weakness, outwit, and probability control. Hot All dog. Yeah. Um, even though he is, you know, mostly a ranged based person, don't want to base this guy because then he's a fourteen for six uh, exploit With weakness. Exploit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, his nine range outwit gives him some staking round power. Probability control also gives him some staking round power. That twenty defense does help him out, but keep in mind. He's all by himself if we do this. Uh, so his first three clicks are that running shot, impervious, pen blast. Second two clicks are charge with energy explosion and invulnerability. Weird, but okay. And then his bottom dial is 125 points, and that's where we get to his last six clicks of his dial, uh, which is his running shot, pen blast, 18 impervious, 11 attack, 10 speed, 4 damage. Um, and then he has last three clicks are sidestep, energy explosion, invulnerability, and outwit much simplistic version of it doesn't have that crazy damage power but still he's a running shot pen blast figure um that has a 14 square reach which is very nice power cosmic so protected out wit and all that jazz uh this dial i'm only a little weary a little scared of kate bishop stuff like that that can blow him right. past his good clicks put him onto his sidestep energy explosion for sealed he does still have that trait of course where he can choose some powers from some asgardian people um, so you might be able to grab some ESD somewhere in there. I'd probably want really to awesome. find a charge piece. Wait, no, a charge standard. piece would be good. Attack or defense, not uh, speed. Uh, attack or defense. Yeah, yeah. Never, never mind. But so, um, if there is, um, this like is where I give him charge. Honestly, if I pulled him in sealed and then I also pulled Enchantress, I might just be like, all right, that's the team. Iron All Father with ESD. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. You know, I honestly. I could I could see that being a very like realistic like possibility for the team. My the or one reason also I might find not play someone... him at three hundred. Okay, is... go for it. It's a there's there's a simple fifty point common reason. And it's uh, the Black <laughs> Widow. Uh, yeah, an Avengers True. like all stealth True. build would be True. rough, and yeah. eventually they're gonna crack that twenty. And yeah, if you I mean obviously if you're you're playing them in sealed, you're not gonna have um, yeah like invincible or anything on the sideline so you won't be able to reduce yeah, you're pen right. damage you're um, right but i mean other than that like one specific kind of thing you know if like they don't move into stealth and he can just nuke black widow from like orbit from nine squares away right. or yeah. kate bishop or like whatever um it's gonna be a pretty solid <laughs> pretty solid pull i mean yeah. all around it's a really solid yeah. it's a really he does fun need casual that piece targeting i think a fun casual piece anything yeah. that's dumb and 300 points is hilarious yeah you know i definitely yeah i don't know if i could win with just a single figure because i'm gonna get out actioned and there's so many that's solid, true you will like, get out figures yeah. but uh the fact that he's got such high stats top dial it's almost like makes me think maybe i could just do yeah like a esd uh, combat reflexes and maybe like switch back and forth kind of thing. Yeah. Um, if the polls says, allow it, it, it doesn't say pretty free solid. or like it's free. It choose doesn't a character have, like, on your sideline. Does it say free? You, yeah, you get to use it until your next turn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is the the destroyer, the one that works with that Loki, the kid Loki we talked so long ago. This guy is 
pretty stout. Again, Kate Bishop outranges him, but pretty stout. Uh, 19 defense for 150 points. 19 defense with impervious. Uh, for three clicks, you've got impervious. It goes down to 18s. Uh, four clicks of prob. Four or three clicks of prob. Three clicks of 12 attack psychic blast. Four damage. Giant size. Guardians team ability. Armor as guardian. Guardians of the galaxy. And robot keywords. Uh, phasing with flight. And then you've got unstoppable juggernaut. Uh, trait which is sidestep and then at the beginning of your turn you may move the destroyer one square now that is interesting because at the beginning of the turn that means you can move him one square and then like roll leadership on him or something if he wasn't adjacent Ooh, to you. Yeah. Uh, you can't mm. sidestep mm. and do that you actually have to do the one square before the sidestep because sidestep is free but anyhow um, this is a really solid piece it's a really hard figure to take down and sealed, and it's a really scary figure, especially with that giant size roll where he's uh, potentially removing action tokens every turn. Mid dial clicks four through six. You have charge blades, eighteen invuln, eleven attacks, uh, three damage with close combat expert and outwit. So you're a twelve for four, and you can get rid of someone's defense. Um, yeah. Dio Neo says you can get more value from 150 point spells spent elsewhere unless you team up with Kid Loki. Then the Destroyer can really live up to its name. Uh, that's only true outside of Sealed, and if you're playing outside right, of Sealed with this, why would you play with that Kid Loki? Right. Uh, but last two clicks are 12 attack with Quake, 3 damage with uh, Prob, and 17 defense with Toughness. Um, really solid figure. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. in sealed and in I think constructed it won't see competitive play because it's just it's a half your no. build but it's a no, really fun figure won't. and it's going to be really hard to counter that kid yeah. Loki combo it's a lot of this. points but yeah with kid Loki yeah uh, next up the destroyer now I agree with higher ground here says this dial design is straight up disrespectful it is because uh, he's 50 points less than the other destroyer counterpart and then he has 10 clicks of life instead now he doesn't have as much special stuff. He has a full dial of sidestep. He only has six speed at his fastest. Um, but he's an 11 attack with... Well, okay, so entire dial of sidestep, entire dial of pen blast, entire dial of impervious, entire dial of close combat expert for 10 clicks long. He has 10 range, one bolt. He is also a giant. Um, he has an 11 attack until his eighth click. He has a four damage on his top two clicks. He is a 19 defense only for his first click. Uh, and then he's a three damage the rest of his dial after those first two clicks of four. So he's 11 for four pen blast right away or a 12 for five at close. He only has sidestep, however. Um, what else does he do? Well, unless he's on your sideline, nothing. So for 100 points in sealed, would I play this guy? Honestly, maybe, but probably. Like, he's beefy. He's awesome for 100 points in sealed. In constructed, he's got probably one of the best sideline actives they've ever made. Uh, sideline active. If destroyer is on your sideline, an opposing character damages a friendly character with an attack. If either character is equipped after us, oh, so you don't play him on your sideline and sealed. Pardon the hell out of me, heck out of me. Definitely play him main force and sealed IMO. Anyways, so if either character is equipped after resolutions, give the destroyer a seeker token and roll a d6, adding the number of seeker tokens and the result. If you get six or more. Generate the destroyer from your sideline in a square along the edge of the map in the same row or column of an equipped character. Then remove all seeker tokens and turn the destroyer's dial to click X, where X is the number of seeker tokens removed. If the destroyer started the game via this trait, when it takes damage after resolutions, return it to your sideline. Not scored, turn it to your sideline. Protected pulse wave. So he can just sort of pop in and out. Whenever you want this bad boy to like, it's freaking off. Not whenever, but yeah. So if you only get one seeker token, if only one damages you and you roll a five or something, which is very possible or a six, then you just get him on click one for it until he gets damaged. And then sure. Maybe they hit him again that turn. All right, fine. Pop him on back. No harm, no foul. Actually, they waste an attack to get the destroyer off the board. So it's all good for you. The dude's insane. Now he is a prime. Thank goodness. So you do have to make some hard choices, whether it's like you want to play Batman, you want to play that new Captain Marvel, you want to play Ultron, Emperor Gladiator, or Ultron Pym, Emperor Gladiator, whatever. You have to make some tough choices with, with primes and what you're willing to do. But hot dog, the Destroyer is a beast. 
Um, I think tier one sealed. I think, yes, it would suck for him to get punked right away by a Kate Bishop, by something else. Um, but, you know, if you're lucky, you pull a Black Widow, put him next to her, then you're cash money doing great. But with the roll, with the long, long dial, I love it. I love this guy. Mm, Ten range. Higher grounds comment on this. Um, wall to wall impervious for 100 points is outrageous. First of all, no, it's not. Uh, no. That's probably the easiest thing to deal with. What's outrageous is it's not for 100 points. It's for zero. This yeah. character comes yeah. on for zero points. And then when you damage him, he leaves. Unless you can somehow find a way to sink enough. Like, let's say he comes on on click three. You still have to hit him for, like, seven pen damage to kill him yeah. uh, in one attack. If he leaves, I don't think he goes back to your sideline. So you only get him that one Wait, start of the game via the straight, takes damage revolution. You return it to your uh, side, goes, so it does go back, back to your sideline. When you pull back. him back in, he goes back to the click number with the amount of to secret whatever, tokens. So yeah. the dam yeah. he doesn't go to whatever click you got hit to. He goes to like three or four again. Um, I, I am curious because you add the number of seeker tokens, you're rolling a D6. On a result of six or more, you generate them. You could potentially have zero seeker tokens and roll this and get a six on the die, but then he'd go to click zero and there is no zero, so um it seems strange. I wonder how they'd I don't know. I kinda just wonder how they'd rule that. They'd just be like, No, you can't roll. Uh, it's it's whenever a friendly character is attacked and then you give them a token and then you roll. Oh, uh, you can only yeah. roll after you can only getting roll the token. So, after yeah, okay. getting a token. Yeah. No, um Yeah, this this prime is let's just say like I'm glad his attack value isn't higher top dial. Because he is he is super bad for a hundred points. He's just not great for a hundred points. In sealed ten range, hundred points with the stats, yes, pretty good. Um for zero points, he's potentially like game breaking bad. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe not, but it just seems like a figure that you can't you can't stop from coming onto the field or controlling when he comes onto the field, and you can't damage him enough to like KO him permanently. Uh, obviously, the seeker tokens are going to keep building and building, and he'll eventually go like pretty low down in his dial. But yeah, I don't know. You can probably control it fairly easily. Uh, next up, it's going to be the super rare Thanos. This is the one with the infinity Mjolnir. Um, for 150 points, you get running shot, psychic blast, 12 speed for three clicks, 12 attack with psychic blast for three clicks, five damage on click one, four damage on clicks two and three. If you start with a 19 impervious and then go to two clicks of 18 impervious, six range, triple lightning bolts, uh, improve targeting out of adjacency, and then you've got the trait. When Thanos hits, roll a d6 on a one. It's the mind, so it's it's the different gems. Uh, so mind. After resolutions, Thanos may use mind control as free, but only to target a hit character, regardless of range or line of fire, which is really cool. Two power. Increase damage dealt to uh, dealt by one, plus one to each hit target. Which yeah. is okay. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's okay. Uh, unless you're splitting it three ways, and then I guess it gets better. Um, three is reality. After resolutions, you may generate a hindering, blocking, or water terrain marker in a square adjacent to the hit character. Probably the worst one. On click four, yeah. you just heal two clicks. Uh, or not on click four. On a roll of a four, roll you heal two clicks. A uh, roll of a five, after resolutions, it's space, you... Uh, after resolutions, may place a hit character in a square within five squares of their current square, which can be pretty big if you're shooting them from six range, being able to increase the distance to 11 squares away or reduce it to one square away. Like, pretty big. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on a six, it's time. Until the end of your next turn, Thanos can use probability control, and opposing characters can't use probability control. Um, so the rest of Thanos' dial, that's like the top click, and that's his trait. Uh, on click four, he get, becomes a charge piece. He's a 12 for three with close combat expert and a 19 impervious again. So he's a 13 for five on that click. On click five, he's a 12 for four, also with a 19 impervious. 19 invuln on click six. Uh, close combat expert, 
for the rest of his dial from click four on, I should say. Um, yeah. And then on yeah. click nine, he gets stop impervious regen. Thanos can reduce penetrating damage, which I think is only the second person we've seen that can reduce pen damage in this whole set. Um, the fact that it's only on a stop click is kind of rough. Uh, you still have to like make your roll out, but it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Um, I don't know. I, I pr probably play this dude at 150. I think that's a pretty fun... I mean, that's the only option, but I think in sealed, like, yeah. you kind of <laughs> have to, right? You kind of have to try it. Uh, he's got he cosmic should. energy, so he's protected outwit and uh, has those willpower rolls. But that top dial being able to nuke somebody, yeah. obviously uh, Kate Bishop outranges him and uh, only needs a seven to hit his top dial. But then he turns into like this charge close combat beast, and all he has to do is hit and roll a four a couple times to heal up um, or yeah. heal off his stop click even. I think the chance of that happening is like pretty decent. It's a one in six. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. It's good. No, it's good. Um. Anyways, uh, I do. I actually really do like this Thanos a lot. I think when we first saw him, we were like, "That's so boring for an Infinity like Mjolnir." And to be fair, it's not as cool as it could be. That's for sure. It's it is pretty meh as far as like Thanos has the Infinity Gems on Mjolnir. That's freaking cool. It's not as cool as it could be. It could be way cooler. Well, so it's just, that part, it's just an infinity say, gem stuff with no Mjolnir flavor. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's like know, when he hits, but I mean, it could be cooler. It could be cooler. Um, he could do. We could do more. Um, or it could be fifty points, and then I'd be like, "Whoa!" No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do want to. I would like to pull him and seal. I'd like to play him and seal. He's solid. It's awesome. Uh, next up, Melkith here, Melkith. I just if you pull him, ask and see if your sealed is doing any mulligans. If those are available, uh, <laughs> that's what I would do. Hundred points, seven range, triple target. No other special combat symbols. Mystics team ability, nine clicks long. Mystics team ability, not bad, not bad. Um, first five clicks stealth. Yeah. Last four clicks sidestep. Okay. First five clicks impervious. Last four clicks super senses. Full dial of blades and exploit. AB, uh, it's a it's a it's a stealth blades exploit figure for a hundred points, and it takes him a super rare slot. Oh no, wait, he's got a trait. Oh, what's it do? Oh, it gives him incapacitate. Cool. When a friendly character uses incapacitate after resolutions gain one mission point. Whoa, mission points, poggers for each hit character that was given a second, second action token. Action token. <laughs> um, so much harder than I, I shouldn't say so difficult. much harder, but. You could build around this fairly easily, but it's a lot harder than the Wrecker. It's a lot harder than Hella. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to hit yeah. multiple times yeah. just to like get give them the action tokens, and then you're assuming. Okay, no Shang Chi Meta one. 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't just think run so. A, a ton of Shang Chi's. With yeah, Inca. run a bunch of Shang Chi's, some TK or some garbage with well, Milk here. Triple, flurry triple attack. Triple yeah, target. flurry triple target incapacitate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, uh, Milk it sucks. It's just when uh, they use Milk it. It's a hundred points. Yeah, when they use oh, wait, it for yeah. each hit character. Yeah, I guess that might reach it. Character that might be a thing that you could do. Uh, in like, sealed, probably not going to make a mission don't. point win. Yeah, not going to no. Um. What does he do for you in sealed? Uh, he's 100 points. That's nine clicks long. That is three damage with stealth. <laughs> he's just bad. He's bad, but I mean, he has upsides. Yeah, he has stealth. He's protected from range, so he's not going to get bombed on right away. But he has no move and attack. Um, if you have some TK, you can maybe make some stuff with his range. But again, he's not a ranged combat attacker. He's a blades exploit guy. Does have mystics, and he is nine clicks long, so that's pretty good, but he's like with he's so mad up dial yeah yeah he's just so lame i don't want to say anything else about him i got nothing to say yeah unlike unlike the comment section which is like uh how many words can we put into how much freaking we can talk about malkith we how have two bricks of text can we too much All right, the answer was too much the last super rare is going to be yet again another thor um if my mouse is going to cooperate here. Okay. 
This Thor really reminds me of that Thor Odinson title character from four years ago. Um, sadly, not it doesn't remind me exactly of that character, but it's it's close. So for 175 points, Thor Odinson here has a top dial of hypersonic. Wait, I thought that was benched. Oh, what? oh no, it's not. What? Uh, yeah, hypersonic, super strength, and get this, invincible. Oh, oh <laughs> what? Dial with what? The only character in the set with these three powers, uh, and their top dial for 175 points. Uh, yeah, 12 speed with hypersonic flight, six range, two lightning bolts, super strength with a 12 attack. 5 damage with exploit, 19 defense with invincible, that's click 1. Uh, the attack value stays at 12 for the first 5 clicks. Uh, the speed value drops a little bit, and the defense Be goes fast. down to 18s. But it's, it stays at 18 until the last 2 clicks where it goes to a 17, and it's 11 clicks long. So also one of the longest dials in the game, or in this set set yeah uh as guardian avengers cosmic deity warrior keywords um movement destroys blocking and targeting ignores characters uh let's see on click five you go to charge with quake and a special power so it's a 12 for four with a special damage power uh you go to impervious instead of invincible um you stay with the charge quake until click eight where you now have charge and a special attack power. So the damage power that you get on click five is the battle shall be ours. Leadership, when Thor uses it, he may treat friendly characters with the Asgardian keyword within range as adjacent. So within six squares, doesn't say line of fire. So just a whole big bubble of leadership usage. And then on click eight to the last click, which is click 11, there is the lightning storm, uh, giant reach of three quake, but deals three pen damage instead of two damage. And so on click eight, you'll have the special damage power with that special attack power. But on click nine, you'll have close combat expert combined with that. So you'll have 11s for the rest of the dial. So really his dial, his attack value never goes over or under 11 for close. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's a super long dial, a uh, whole bunch of damage, a whole bunch of, like, interesting stuff uh, for 175 points. Or you can play them at 75 points, or 100 points. I wish uh, it was 75. You no. can play them at 100 points, no. get all the same uh, uh, attack and no. damage powers and stuff like that. And uh, you don't get hypersonic or super strength. You just start with the charge, quake, impervious clicks, which I think was click four. Um but yeah, it's interesting. Uh, pull five. and play him. Tier one sealed. Pull and play him. Easy. I can't believe. Easy pull and play him. I just can't believe sealed. the unbenching for a single character. For a single character? So yeah, wild. it's because someone out with kids is like, you know what? I really like Thor. And even though we, we made all these terrible Thors in this set, we're going to give you one really good Thor. You're welcome. I mean, why couldn't one of the shifting focus ones had hypersonic or... Man, just anything. Anything. I don't know. You get one big beefy Thor and you're going to like it! <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what came over me there. <clears throat> I apologize. Oh, Owlman 166 says that Thor is stupidly undercosted. Should be 275, 150 split dial minimum. I could see 200, <sighs> maybe even 250. 275 for, that top for a 275. 12 for 5. That much. What are you smoking? These people are living. In I mean, I understand that power creep is a thing and that we like we all don't like it. But if you honestly have looked at the last two years worth of sets and you think this dial is worth two seventy five, no. No. Yeah. If I see a twelve attack as my top dial and I see a two in the point slot, I'm gonna probably pass on that figure. Um but yeah, that's Thor. All right. Impressive. Chases. Big old Chase. Super impressive. Love the guy. Uh, chases. Start off the Chases. We're not going to talk about any Chases that are good, of course. Uh, we got Black Widow here. Uh, improved targeting. Nor is Jason. Shoot well based. Uh, five range. 
three lightning bolts, entire dial of running shot, which means, of course, she has an entire dial of close combat expert. I don't know what else it would be. <laughs> Clearly, that's the only other thing it could be. And yeah. an entire dial of a special attack power, which is energy explosion and pen blast. So she has a 12 for three pen blast running shot. Um, very solid. Five range is a little rough, but very solid. Three clicks of impervious, three clicks of super senses for defense. All very solid, and then, you know, I think for 75 points, that's already a fine dial. Like, it's already a very solid dial, Avenger dial figure. Okay, so, yeah. And, you know, we get the trade in. She just gets to bring in some lurkers. So she uses the tuning fork, Lockjaw's headband thing. Um, at the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6 and give Black Widow the number of summon tokens equal to the result. Three, remove six summon tokens and generate a lurker bystander. Max one. So what's the lurker do? Lurker is an 8-speed flurry, 10 attack with nothing, 17 defense with invulnerability, and 3 damage. But he also has Mystics, which is kind of cool. Lurker also has a trait. Powered by fear, weakened by bravery. If an opposing character has been KO'd since your last turn, modify attack plus 2, making him a 12 for 3 flurry, which is awesome. If a friendly character has been KO'd since your last turn, modify attack negative 2. Um, this Black Widow is solid, though. I know I said she was lame, and... First look, she does look lame, but she is solid. Running shot, pen blast, energy explosion, three damage. If she gets based, then she's a 13 for five, so you don't really want to base her. It's always nice to have a ranged figure that you don't, that like incentivizes you to not get adjacent to, especially when you know she could just spawn the lurker. Um, you know, later in the game, you could just, if I have a bunch of summon tokens, move yeah. up my full speed, drop the lurker there, he might be a 12 for three. Like, very solid, I mean, plus he's got mystics. At the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6, give her a number of summon tokens. You just keep getting those tokens. Yeah, and then, for free. So it's like max one, so you can't like have more than one. But anytime they kill the lurker, you should probably already have enough to just summon another one. Make like, another one. So they're um, probably just not going to kill the lurker. Uh, she's also yeah. 50 points, or she's only four clicks, which... If you want to play this more economy dial, I think that's fine. I think for the extra 25 points to have that 12 top dial, though, as opposed to a 10, is is worth yeah, it, in my opinion, and probably. give her a bit more life. Um, otherwise, it's her last four clicks, and she has Impervious, and then just three clicks of Super Senses. So but I'd probably play her at Calder 75. finally got his wish. They, we finally have a Black Widow with no stealth. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I'm a little Unless happy. Yeah, you play right. her with the common Black Widow. Well, yeah. And then, then she has stealth. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> No, right. I think it's a fun piece. It's one of the more fun rares, in my opinion. Uh, next up, we have the Human Torch. Uh, this is good old, uh, did you put your name in the goblet, Harry? Uh, Human Torch. Uh, that's Dumbledore yelling at Harry. Oh, uh, I thought it was Gandalf talking about. <laughs> yeah, the, Gandalf. when Gandalf was people. like, Harry, you must take the ring to, yeah. to bring the goblet of fire. Yeah. It has to burn. The ring needs to burn. That's uh, what happens in those movies, right? I haven't seen the burn. sculpt in person, but it, it looks kind of goofy. Yeah, and I haven't seen Lord of the Rings either. Wow. Anyways, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so for 100 points, Human Torch. Uh, man, this is a hard one. So 100 points, he starts off with four clicks of running shot. He has a special attack power with a 12 attack top dial that is burning up and it's poison but deals damage even if moved or placed this turn not what i want comboed with my top dial running shot piece he's got seven range two lightning bolts 18 defense with esd and four damage with uh prob um he has a trait that is human torch deals penetrating damage so i guess you don't need psychic blast anywhere on the dial because no matter what you do you're dealing penetrating damage, which does also apply to his poison and his energy explosion uh, that he gets later. And then free, choose a debris marker within range. Opposing characters occupying or adjacent to the marker are dealt one damage. Again, one pen damage um, because he's dealing it. Uh, choose a debris marker within range. So you will have to, it doesn't have to be created by him, but it will be, like, have to be made because debris markers aren't just on the map. Uh, that's like destroying blocking or a wall or barrier or something. Um, clicks two through four, he goes to running shot energy explosion. Still has the uh, prob on dial, still has ESD. He drops to a 17 defense on click four. He drops to three damage for clicks three and four. Then on click five, he goes to sidestep energy explosion toughness and enhancement. And he's got enhancement the rest of his dial till click eight. He's got sidestep the rest of his dial 
and then he gets a that same special power, the poison, but can be moved or placed. Uh, he gets that on his last three clicks with his 10 attack. Um, he does have mystics, but he just doesn't have a lot of reducing power. Uh, if you want to load him up, if you really want to try and make him be something interesting, I guess like the Stones of Merlin might be worth it. Uh, yeah. Just something. Uh, oh, his movement and uh, improved movement destroys blocking, so that's another way you can make those uh, debris markers, and then his improved targeting destroys blocking. Um, he's got the same stuff on a lower dial for half the points. He starts on sidestep, energy explosion, toughness, and that three damage with uh, enhancement. Um, I think if you're playing him, you're probably playing him for the debris marker, uh, pen damage kind of stuff. He does have the Fantastic Four team ability as well, with uh, Asgardian deity and Fantastic Four keywords, but... Man, I don't know. I really want to like him. I just he just falls a little short in like the longevity department. I don't think he's gonna yeah. stick around past one or two hits. Yeah, yeah. I I do actually like him. I think a lot of people are pretty negative on the guy right away. Hundred points is a lot for what he does. He's still a running shot pen blast piece, so he doesn't have to be adjacent. You know, destroying blocking is solid. I I really do. I think I think what he does is. Is pretty darn awesome. I, mean, I think it's a solid seal pull. And I think at the very least, you know, I'm never going to complain about these original characters like Black Widow, Human Torch, uh, all the other ones we're going to get here coming up. They're just, they're awesome because they're cool, they're original, and they just look different on the shelf. And I'm I'm all always going to be for that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that is next cool. up, if you weren't impressed with the last lame Doctor Strange we got, well, hey, howdy, hey, we get another lame Doctor Strange in this set. Not as lame. Still pretty lame. Uh, eight range, double bolt, stealth, and speed, 12 attack, pen blast, 18 defense, super senses, two damage, special damage power, top dial. A two damage top dial just really sucks for this set. It just really yeah. sucks. Um, Especially Defenders missed it. Two damage on all the clicks where he's got a 12 attack. Y yeah. It clearly he cannot have a 12 attack and 3 damage. It's just no. not balanced at all. Uh, 75 points. He is the like only character only character in this set that ignores Hindering Terrain. One of two or three characters yeah. in this set that ignore Hindering Terrain. Like yeah, I didn't is. notice a lot. So he's like one of two or three characters that ignore Hindering Terrain. So that is worth a look. If you pull a TK, I think definitely play this guy, though, by the way. Uh, he has Mind Control. When he uses as range, modify attack plus two. So he has a 14 attack targeting two people Mind Control right away. Very solid. Very, very solid. Um, still boring, though. And then his special damage power for three, three clicks is Outwit Prob Control. So, he does have an entire dial of Super Senses, an entire dial of Outwit when he loses the damage power, and then he has an entire dial of Super Senses. On his last four clicks of life, he does get Sidestep. He can still move around. He'll have plenty of opportunities to pen blast somebody later. He's at the very least an 11 at the very lowest on his dial, which is nice. Um, but it kind of sucks when you have a 12 attack pen blast and their roll at the beginning of the game is kind of to either ping someone for a measly two damage or the better option is mind, mind control, control two people. Yeah. So it sucks when you have such a great silver bullet, but his stats and his speed powers don't allow him to be such a silver bullet. So the shuffling him around with stealth, hopefully you pull a TK and sealed. I think he'll be fine to build around, you know, give him things like exospecs in silver goblins glider, whatever, you know, uh, give him some form of move and attack. Yeah, you know, you'll him be with able weapon to hex from rise and fall and exospecs or the liar ring. And you've got a nasty little combo right there. That's a really good opinion. You had Simeon. <laughs> that's a really good official opinion you have there. That's good stuff. <laughs> um. Yes. John Tronathan kind of opinion. On Jonathan Tronathan's uh, official uh, opinion there. Um, but yeah, uh, but as a chase, though, I'd be pretty bummed to pull this as my chase, if I'm being realistic yeah. with you here. I think on a mystical team is where he shines, though. Bunch of Dr. Fates. They got TK. They got Enhancement. They got what he needs. And he's, like, very fun. So I think Constructed, he can be very fun to build around. I think Sealed, I think if you do pull him, you do play him, just because of that ignores hindering terrain is just huge, yeah. honestly. Yeah, um, being able to move somebody out of stealth with, like, mind control is real plus, big. 
Yeah. Plus the prob and outwit, you know, and I think yeah. he becomes a tier one sealed if you pull a TK. Then that's like a different story. Sure. Uh, but still, he leaves a lot to be desired. Um. But anyways, yeah, you know, that's Doctor Strange. He yeah, he yeah. just doesn't feel like a chase figure. But anyways, uh, yeah. Yeah, I I would have preferred to pull like some of the super rares over him. Uh, next up is Rocket Raccoon, who comes in at fifty points. Uh, running shot for the first three clicks, sidestep for the last two, eight speed running shot. Does have seven range, triple bolts with the Guardians team ability. Um, so this is the, what is that called? Uh, the, the casket, casket of, of ancient, ancient winters. winters. Yeah. Uh, this isn't the, it's a cool pose. It's cool, like fun little thing. So all of his powers are in reference to that. So uh, he's got yeah. a special attack power for his whole dial. Special damage power for his first three clicks with three damage. Uh, last two clicks, he's got outwit with two damage. Um, most of his dial is, well, he's only five clicks long, so he's got two clicks of 12 attack, three clicks of 11, uh, three clicks of 18 defense with super senses, and then his last two clicks are 17 super senses. So that's all the dial stuff. Uh, he has a trait that is too cold for you furless wonders. Plasticity. Opposing characters within four squares in line of fire consider Rocket Raccoon adjacent for movement purposes. So he's he's a sticky, cold little uh, raccoon. Um, I guess he's standard size, not little. Uh, his attack power he has this whole dial is Winters Come Early For You, Energy Explosion. When Rocket Raccoon uses it after resolutions, give each hit character an action token. I like that because you're able to deal damage. You've got triple target and all the people that take the energy explosion damage or everyone that gets hit, whether they reduce it or not, gets an action token. So even if you're not damaging, you're at least giving out action tokens. And then the special damage power for the first three clicks with three damage is what? It's just a snowball. Outwit once per turn for all characters with this effect. When Rocket Raccoon uses Outwit after resolutions, deal the targeted character one damage if it has one or more action tokens. Um, yeah. It's just, it's fine. One dam. It's not pen damage, but I mean, if you out with their reducer, I guess you know. Simeon, um, how are you not just absolutely losing your mind thinking that this is the most meta thing <laughs> since sliced bread? How are you not just through the moon right now that they've graced you with this beautiful animal keyword of figure? Don't you know how good the animal keyword is? Yeah. Don't you understand that this figure redefines <sighs> hero clicks as we know it? I mean, so he's. <sighs> No, I I don't. He's fifty. I don't points. get it he's, either. He's a fun I don't get figure it either, man. for sure. I don't see, and like maybe I'm just that far away from like the truly competitive scene, but I do not see how him on an animal team is better than like uh, Deadpool the duck or whatever. Duckpool the the dead, whatever that. It's one Deadpool was. the duck. Yeah. yeah. It's Deadpool the duck. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see how this would be like a better like filler piece. I like yeah, he's got outwit. He's got outwit that can damage you. He's got energy explosion that can give you action tokens. He's got stuff that like stops you from moving. Sure. Plasticity is really solid. I think that's the biggest thing, honestly. It's really I think solid, his trait yeah. is the biggest is the biggest thing. It, it stops sky tyrant. At the same time, you know, stop stops flash. Oh, sure. Like if you're if yeah. you're just trying to make it to like whatever turn you're going to try an alpha. Uh um, Yeah. That's pretty But man, huge I can outrange him. Like I mean, I mean yeah. I can just like shoot him. I can just like you know, go raccoon hunting, <laughs> like Elmer Fudd. Uh, no, okay. I I really Never. like it. It's probably yeah. one of my the top three chases for me in this set. Uh, but no, I don't see it personally. Yeah. I don't I don't feel like I'd play it competitively. Yeah, that's why you're playing with yourself, Simeon. <laughs> um, that's true. All right, next up, Venom. So if you read War of the Realms in one of the side stories. This version of Venom, this like Asgardian war armor version of Venom, is really cool. This dial is not really cool, so let's talk about it. Uh, seven clicks long. We unbenched Shape Change. Yeah. For his last three clicks Just of for flight. Those last three clicks. I don't understand, WizKids. Oh. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to understand. You gave him the symbiotic fusion trait, which is technically better. It is technically sure. better. Plasticity super yeah. senses. He can't be targeted by range. If he's in four squares in line of fire and opposing character. It is technically better. But my my dudes, my guys. 
You unbent shape change to put it on the last three clicks of his dial. Why? Why? I don't understand. Ignores elevated terrain. First three clicks charge. First four clicks, he has exploit and blades. Entire dial invulnerability. That's all fine. Last four clicks flurry. That's all fine. Last three clicks, like we said, shape change, steel energy. Also fine. Fine dial. Little boring. Little just meh. Again, if you took a shot every time we said charge blades or like charge <laughs> blades, exploit, you'd be dead. Or maybe there's just been enough. No, there hasn't even been that much time between shots of charge blades figures. No, you would be. You would be dead. It would be dead. Um, this set is wild. It's just charge blades. Um, great. This is cool. Dreamstone simulcrum. Simul simulcrum. Too many crumbs. Too many full crumbs. Too many full crumbs. Too many simulcrums. I don't understand. Too many ums. Yes. Uh, power. Generate a dreamstone simulcrum bystander. Max one. If Venom hit an opposing character, this trait is free this turn. Okay, so what do they do? That's this is actually a really, really solid good bystander. For free. So he makes for free if he hits this turn. 10 speed charge, 11 attack blades. Oh, charge blades, take a shot. 18 defense, invulnerability, 3 damage exploit for free when he hits that turn. He runs up, he hits you. It's it's his top dial. He's a 10, 11, 18, 3. He makes a 10, 11, 18, 3 charge blades, invulnerability, exploit. Pretty gnarly. So that's actually all really, really cool and really, really good. It's just not like, as cool and good as you want to be because he's this really cool, yeah. spiky, bony venom figure One. where it's like i want him to be cooler i Man, wish it was like, if he was probably if he was just charged flurry top dial i'd probably change my tune totally differently yeah but i wish he was just a little bit more that's i'm just it. getting that's all I, say. I, I don't know i get a little sick of seeing chases with like no special powers and maybe that's just like maybe i've been spoiled on like really text heavy things but like give me a special power give me a interesting thing or, I mean, I don't want to be, like, loaded down with traits, but, like, man, we have several super rares and even some rares with more stuff going on than this guy. Not saying that they're better, but they've got more stuff going on. Um, I will say this next character is a little loaded down with special powers. Uh, I kind of want to get this Spider-Man and slap Galactus on it and try it at like a wko or something so this character's super annoying spider-man as a, uh, a spider-man yeah the, the sculpt kind of lame for a chase not gonna lie i what thought is it was it? A super what is he doing when I was is he just sort of jumping right he's yeah. just sort of like jumping and flipping just, yeah just kind of like kind of doing a swing kind of just like the the way that they shaped there's a thor that's like equally weird the way that they did the movement effects aren't like flow they're they're just like this character is like above the ground so it's not like there's a movement to like how i'm moving or you know like there's no like you know it's not like the like when the flash runs and it like trails behind him it's just like i'm in the air so like here's some clear plastic holding me in the air uh they don't like make it into part of the sculpt so that's that's part of the reason why i don't like these uh, they're probably sturdier than the other way they do it, but yeah. Anyhow, for 75 points, the thing I really love about this character, it's got, so it's Spider-Man, Peter Parker, uh, six range, triple lightning bolts, Spider-Man, team ability, as guardian, Avengers, future, past, scientist, and Spider-Man family keywords. Uh, first three clicks are charge. You've got a special attack power on clicks one, three, four, and six. Special damage power on clicks 1, 2, 5, and 6. Uh, otherwise, you have on clicks 2 and 5, you have in cap. And then on clicks 3 and 4, you have prob. For the first three clicks, you have combat reflexes. And for the last three clicks, you have willpower. So the, uh, there's the treat, the trait. There's a trait. You thought I was hard to touch before. I could stop time. Hard to touch before I can stop time. Super senses. When Spider-Man uses it, increase the result by plus one for each time the attack was re-rolled. Uh, which is super solid. Because yes. the Spider-Man has time diamonds as the special damage power on clicks one and two, five and six. Time diamonds is probability control. Spider-Man and adjacent friendly characters have safeguard opposing probability control. Um, which is really solid. Uh... The special attack power is what really puts this character over for me. So, 
We've got traded super senses. We've got super senses that is increased anytime you reroll an attack. We have probability control and safeguard against opposing probability control. And then we have time dilation. When making an attack roll, Spider Man may roll three dice instead of two. And then, after any rerolls or dice replacements, choose one die to ignore. When Spider Man is attacked, you may choose the opposing character rolls three dice instead of two. Then, after any rerolls or dice replacements, choose one die to ignore. I had this, so I was playing against this Spider Man. I had. No, it wasn't Nova. Um, who did I have left? I had uh, Black Knight and. I had Black Knight and uh, Black Widow against this Spider Man on click six. And um, this reroll power, this or not reroll, but this roll three dice anytime he's attacked makes it so hard to hit the Spider Man. Combine that with prob, like the amount of like ones and twos, like, you know, I need, I need a six to hit. Well, if I, if I roll like a one and a five normally, that would hit. But if I roll a one, five and a three, they can ignore the five. And then I, you know, essentially roll a four. Um, but no, this, the, the roll three die thing isn't something that we haven't seen before. We've obviously, I think, uh, Dormammu had it, the colossal one. But it's a really fun mechanic. It's really interesting. I don't think 75 points is too much for it. It's probably not competitive, but it's something that I want to be able to make work. Uh, the fact that Spider-Man can copy the Wonder Woman team ability, and then I can also increase just by probbing it. So I can uh, play like a Wonder Woman, copy the team ability, uh, attach Galactus or something, and I can just have this really hard to deal with character, and I think it's really fun. Yeah, I, this is one of the coolest dials WizKids has made in a long time. Like the dial design for this is really fun. It's it's stuff we've seen before, and some stuff we haven't seen before, which is really really cool. Or stuff like in this specific way, and it's just cool. Like this is just a cool dial you've made. It's a fun Spider-Man dial. It's a great Peter Parker dial. And the whole time dilation, time travel, time diamonds, whatever's going on here is so perfectly well made for this. Like, it it makes me wish it, it was like a, a Kang dial, you oh, know? Yeah. Like, yeah, Kang you know? was like even close to this cool. And I would like lose it. Yeah. Or a I really like dial. The, the turning the three, um, the three die yes. against your opponent. Yes, I like because that. Because it's not just like normal prob, it's like, you know, make him roll three. So you're increasing the chances of there being like a bad roll in there somewhere. Uh, they need essentially out of three dice have to have. Um, I mean, they have to have like at least two that are really good or they have to have three that are all like average, like threes or fours. Yeah. Otherwise, they're just missing a bunch of the attacks. Right. I mean, well, rolling three dice is never bad. Like that's always great for your opponent. However, you do you it's getting to choose which one to yeah. ignore? Yeah, yeah, that's that is big. Right, it's big. Uh, no, I love this Spider Man. Um, and now stepping away from really cool, unique dials that are all very different, we have She Hulk. Don't oh, get me wrong, boy. I love She Hulk. This is hilarious. <laughs> I I want to pull her so bad. I'm not going to try to trade for her or whatever. I might borrow her one night to play. So we got we got WWE Championship belt She Hulk in the house, mm -hmm. and I I'm here for it. <laughs> um, she has Megan Jord, Meg, Megan Megan Yord, Megan Yord, probably Yord. Uh, the belt of strength. This is her only trait. And we'll talk about the rest of it. Free. Choose one. This is all things she can just do is free. Do it once per turn. Telekinesis is free, but only to target an adjacent friendly character. That's awesome. Uh, generate a heavy object. Okay. This turn, when she uses an object action, increase the damage dealt by one, poggers, and then heal she hold two clicks. Again, poggers. She's got nine clicks of life for 100 points. Avengers Fantastic Four. Asgardian Brute keywords, the Avengers and Fantastic Four team ability as well. She's a 12 speed, 12 attack, 19 defense, 4 damage. Entire dial is entire dial of charge, entire dial of super strength, unbenched for this bad girl. And then entire dial of impervious, entire dial of close combat expert, which means she's a 13 for 5 top dial. Yeah. Assuming she's not picking up um, an object. Assuming she doesn't even pick up an object. 
you know, so if she picks up an object and uses the free, uh, uses an object action right. to increase the damage. Seven damage. Then, yeah, seven she's damage. 13 for seven. 13 Wait. for seven top dial. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Five. Six, oh, yeah. I mean, it's rule of three. Seven, yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. And that's, I love her. I mean, it's great. That's even with, like, a light object because heavies do the same, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. They both do the same. You're right, so. But, I call yeah, still seven. Anyways. Yeah. So, it's it's baller, freaking awesome. She's great. Now keep in mind, she suffers from all the same things that destroyer suffers from. Potentially getting punked right away. You know, she only has impervious, so pen damage. She's susceptible to it. She's susceptible to outwit. Blah, blah. You know, all that same stuff. So all that same stuff. She's not like technically, she's not like a tier one pick for sealed. She's like tier two pick for sealed. But because she's awesome, that free TK is so huge for moving just the rest of your team makes her totally easily that free TK alone makes her worth yeah. the hundred points. And then being an amazing attacker in her own right makes her worth one third of your build. Is she meta? Is she competitive? No, she's not. She has a fifty point line where it's only three clicks and that's just sad. It makes me want to throw up in my yeah, mouth and I bad. hate it. So don't even show that to me, WizKids. But this normal dial, absolutely love it. It's super fun. It's Jen Walters. She's having a good time. She flexing. She got the championship belt. I love it. That's all I got to say about her. She's freaking awesome. She's fun. I think if you pull her, you should just play her because she's hilarious and she's awesome. Yeah. I love I think her. it's... Love her. Yeah. It might take a little getting used to, like, all the stuff that she's capable of, but... A little heck, bit. Just the heal two clicks for free each turn is probably worth 100 points right? of nine There's clicks. not... Guys, there's not a lot of healing in this. There's no support in this set. No. There's none. It's very little The only regen. healing is like late dial Some, regen. Uh, steel energy, but... The one X-Men character, if somebody else copies it. Yeah. Like, it's... There's not a lot of healing in this set. So, her just getting free heal two clicks. Her and Thanos with the free heal two clicks. Goes a long way. Goes a yeah. long way. All right. All right, Simeon. Finish us up. Finish us Last up. Last chase is going to be Iron Man 064. Comes in at 125 points uh, on the top dial. So it's going to be another running shot energy explosion piece, kind of similar to the uh, Human Torch. So we've got a 10 speed flight, 8 range, 2 lightning bolts, 18 defense with a special defense power, special defense power for the first 6 clicks, um, 4 damage without wit for the first 3 clicks. Uh, the special defense power is impervious, and then Iron Man takes a maximum of one damage from range attacks and blades, claws, fangs, protected outwit. So, name of it is Swords and Arrows. That's adorable. Um, but yeah, max of one damage from range attacks and blades. Since blades is optional, I just don't know why you would even bother rolling it. Like, obviously, they, <clears throat> they have to put that in the text otherwise you just would roll blades but at I, once it's on there like no one's ever going to use it um but the max of one damage is pretty cool because that means if you're getting psychic blasted you're only getting psychic blasted for one regardless of anything else um and then this tony stark so on click four you get you go from outwit to leadership with three damage for clicks four th five six mm -hmm. Uh, keep the the same defense with that uh, impervious and take a max of one from range and blades. Uh, on clicks five, well, on click five, you switch over from running shot to sidestep for two clicks. And then you switch permanently to poison for the rest of the dial with a 10 attack. Uh, the last three clicks, you get an eight speed with charge. You lose the special damage power or special defense power and get invuln. And then you also pick up, instead of leadership, you get close combat expert. So you're rocking an 11 for four on the last clicks, which means that the majority of this Iron Man's dial is at least four damage. Um, and then the final thing about him is that, let's see, uh, he's got a trait. Isn't it a bit too cold for Shakespeare in the park? Iron Man and adjacent friendly characters can't be given action tokens by opposing effects. I guess that's cool. It's it's not the worst thing uh, they could ever do, but um, in Sealed, he's a monster. He's not like nearly as crazy as some of the stuff we've seen. He doesn't deal penetrating damage or anything, but 12 for 4 with an 8 range outwit, 2 lightning bolts, um, 
He does have a 75 point line that starts on the running shot energy explosion and it's the first click of the leadership clicks which are okay like i mean if that's the economy version that you want i think he's worth the extra 50 points for um the, the extra 50 points for the outwit top dial but that's just me yeah no i think so i, I like this dial i think it's there's such a unique Iron Man dial. Like, there's like such a weird power combos going on here that we're not used to seeing for him. But I would say, why not for Outwit? Outwit's not crazy hard in this set, but still, like, you don't have another Outwit, definitely need it. So, when it makes up it's for a the fun, lack flavorful of pen damage that he has. True, it's having also his own true. Outwit. Yeah, yeah, I think it kind of depends if you're hurting for leadership or Outwit more. I think it, it kind of comes down to that. In sealed, uh, constructed. No, whatever you want, man. Whatever you want to do, but I like that outwit. And then, you know, that's that's like the set. We don't yeah. normally go over any of the legacy cards and stuff in these big set reviews, so we're not going to. I will just say, just big shout out. You know what? A lot of respect for bringing back Thor's Chariot. Even though it's, you know, whatever it is, that's still cool. You guys brought it back. It's such an iconic point in Hero Clicks, like I hope history. They, um, so if they're not going to be doing two by twos as much. I really hope every set reaches back and does. Yeah. Like if we got the old the like beast. Apocalypse onslaught Sentinels, like the real old X Men two by twos, like the giant size stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be awesome. I hope that continues to be a trend. Yeah, and then of course, big shout outs to the Legacy um, <laughs> Wrecking Crew. They're just all awesome. Like thank you seriously, thank you so much for like remaking all those guys. I love it because, and I think it's awesome because I literally just played the Wrecking Crew a few months ago, and I beat a Secret Six team with them, like barely. It was like painful, but now with this, with this, now this is powerful. This is good stuff right here. This is a Wrecking Crew. I just now need a legacy card with the um, what was it? Amazing Spider Man or no? Uh, Superior Foes Baron Zemo, so I can give them all plus one attack again and sidestep. Yes. Oh, heck yes. Yeah. That's no, that's good stuff. That's how I used to play him, and it um, was really nuts. Yeah. Oh, dude, that Baron Zemo. Now, he needs a legacy card. At one, make him not 90 points anymore for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, all right. That's War of the Realms. That's, Let us yeah, know what you War guys think of it. All that jazz. Uh, we'll be back to finally get to some listener questions next week. Yep. Um, because yeah it's been almost two weeks now and uh yeah if you uh, want to see us do episode 400 uh, it's on youtube i'm not gonna say it's perfect but it's it's definitely it's but it's 400 experience that we went through so episode 400 if somehow you manage to listen to all eight hours i'll be impressed but uh you know yeah yeah well well and Here's to uh, another set review and another 400 episodes in the future. Uh, but, you know, if you want to pick up some of this War of the Realms, I think I think really, like, the, the best stuff is in that common, uncommon kind of section, which is good. It's a little bad, but it's good. Uh, if you want to pick some of it up, you can pick it up at CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out coolstuffing.com like always happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks no are you serious again how many people even play this game like the hundred instant deadpan humor oh how they, six uh, people humor? think i am funny it's the hard day's work not that you know anything about that which Absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. <laughs>